You don't just live in your home. You live in your neighborhood as well. So when you're shopping for a home, you want to know as much about the area around it as possible. Luckily, Homes.com has got you covered. Each listing features a comprehensive neighborhood guide from local experts. Everything you'd ever want to know about a neighborhood, including the number of homes for sale, transportation, local amenities, cultural attractions, unique qualities, and even things like median lot size and a noise score. Homes.com. We've done your homework. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows Granger's got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. It's time to dust off your glove, grab your bat, and hit the road for some baseball. But before you head to the game, make sure your ride is in top shape. At Axton Automotive, our skilled mechanics ensure your vehicle is running smoothly so you can focus on cheering for your team. Don't strike out this spring. Get your car ready for baseball season. Visit axtonautomotive.com or call 360-685-7976. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. Kicks. <laughs> The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times, and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. And away we go. Welcome to season 19, episode number 4,119. Along with Steve the Thrill Hill, the Ted Smith, Woo! and my car. Montgomery! Thank you, Hardimentro. On Ted, today we celebrate Kiss. Kiss. On a Bad Choice Friday. The return of Ted versus the FCC. Plus headlines, a bedroom shot of the day, fun with listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV time with Ted. Click clack. Drag and drag. All right, here we go. Man gets pulled aside by TSA because his entire suitcase was filled with delicious cans of Spam. Yeah. Meanwhile, a Florida restaurant tries to open for breakfast with an alligator waiting outside for ham. Florida man coughs and sneezes, which makes his intestines explode. We stay in Florida where the seeds of education in one family were sowed. And a woman sues after being handcuffed to a cruiser that was on the railroad tracks and got hit by a train. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. All our bitches, good day to you and yours. All right, we're all human. And as a result, we all pee, we all poop. We all burp, we all fart, we all puke, we all cough, and we all sneeze. But every once in a while, these mundane and ordinary bodily functions, they go terribly and unexpectedly wrong. Now, you might remember the story out of Florida from last year where a man had his arm torn off by an alligator while he was peeing behind a bar. 
But peeing, it seems, can be dangerous business. A guy in London, he was seriously injured when his head got crushed between two carriages on a moving train while he was peeing. And a man in Germany, inexplicably, sent four people to the hospital when he peed off of a bridge and into their tour boat below. That's just peeing. A man in Florida, he sneezed and coughed at the same time, and as a result, his colon exploded and his intestines fell out. As a side note, just know that he was at a diner eating with his wife at the time. A different guy, he held in a sneeze and ended up with a hole in his windpipe. In Oklahoma, a man was seriously injured when he hit his head on a mailbox while leaning out of the window of a moving car to puke. Today, we're talking about bodily functions that went sideways. I mean, it could be as simple as gambling on a fart and losing, throwing your back out while you're puking, which I've done, getting trapped in a porta potty But today, we want to know what ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong. To be a part of the big show, call 206-803-ROCK. Like The Men's Room on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live, and send those emails to the men's room at KISW.com. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids do a classroom? Homes.com knows these are all things you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows Granger's got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Better health isn't always about the big things. Sometimes it's a nudge from a friend or a head nod from a fellow jogger or even a smile from across the breakfast table when you've decided to pass on the bacon. It's the little things that lead to better health. And Regents is here as a partner, opening doors to the care you need, no matter the size, because it all adds up to something big, a healthier you. Regents Blue Shield, together we health. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9. KISW. Home show is the way we go. Welcome to season 19, episode number 4,119. What a large and in charge program we have for you today on this oh so positive Friday. The exciting return of Ted versus the FCC. We have a redo from last week on Ted versus the FCC. We got a brand new one, and Ted just stumbled there, I believe, on the second try. So we'll give you a, uh, oh, the second verse, so to speak. So Thank we'll, you for giving me another opportunity. We'll give you another opportunity there <laughs> as we're talking about, uh, you remember Schlitz Beer back in the day? Oh, yeah. This is a place called Schlitz Creek. Huh. And Sid went there with steamy sheet loads <laughs> to ship there to Schlitz Creek. Schlitz Ted Creek. versus the FCC is uh, on the way. What else do we have for you today? Updated locations, hopefully over the weekend. If you haven't tried it yet, a uh, chance for you to drink some delicious Men's Room IPA from Black Raven Brewing. So we'll update some of those locations in the meantime. If you haven't been able to find it yet, KISW.com, you will see the uh, Black Raven IPA, Men's Room IPA. Go there, click on that banner, and then from there, there is a list of all locations. You yeah. can click on that, see where we know it, where the beer is now. In the meantime, Please continue to send those those pictures to the men's room at KISW.com with the location, and we will continue to spread the word on the deliciousness that is Men's Room IPA. And you guys are doing an incredible job of uh, benefiting our three local Fisher houses. I know sales have been oh so much better than they've been in years. Oh, yeah. People yeah. are very excited about the new beer, and we are too. So, And look, if you can't find Men's Room IPA and they don't have it, 
pick whatever style of beer that you like from Black Raven. And, You'll be happy. And pick up a six-pack of that beer. If you can't yeah. find our IPA, they have a Trickster IPA. They have an unbelievable Pilsner. They have a, a, a great Porter, a Coco Jones. They've got a number of good things as far as their beer world is concerned. I didn't know that was called Coco Jones. Coco sounds Jones. like a boxer, doesn't it? I was thinking a hot chick, but... Really? Yeah. I was thinking a big a brother big of boxes. Coco Jones. Yeah, you're right. It's probably because of Ice T's wife. Yeah, it's it, absolutely yes, because it of Ice T's wife. Yeah, that's probably the only Black Raven beer that I will just kind of refuse on the shelf. It's coconut. I can't do it. Really? Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, they have great beer, and I'm sure it tastes fantastic to people that can stomach coconut. Also, a uh, special guest on the program today. I uh, for TV time with Ted. I'm not sure if she's in Kansas City with the Royals or not, but she does cover the Royals for Root Sports. The one and only Jen Mueller. We'll talk a little Mariners baseball, and she's also she says she covers the Royals. No, no, did I say Royals? Yeah. I meant Mariners, sorry. She's at the Royals, maybe. Dude, did she get traded? She covers the Mariners. You never know. She has a cooking show, but she's also got a benefit thing coming up. So yeah. uh, Jen's coming up with a little TV time with Ted. What else do we have for you today? We will drink and toast in the weekend with a shout of the day. That's Bad Choice Friday. You know it's Bad Choice Friday. It's Bad Choice Friday. You know it's Bad Choice Friday. Hey, man, this is your fault. And today we celebrate Kiss on a Bad Choice Friday. How do we celebrate Kiss with a couple of birthdays? One that is and one that could have been. So on this day in 1958, the artist known as Prince was born. He would have been 66 years old today. How many ice cubes would you have to put on your testicles for your voice <laughs> to consistently stay? I'd have to, like, sit on the soldering mm-hmm. iron or ice my boys. Yes. I don't think anybody could ever cover that version that way, so to speak. And they didn't. Now, we celebrate another birthday today, turning 84 years old. You know, Mr. Man, it's not unusual. Uh, what's new, Pussycat? And, of course, kiss the legendary Tom Jones. You don't have- Tom Jones, yeah. 13 inch penis, and shows it in his leather pants every time he takes the stage. 84 years old today. Tom Jones, the legend. I love that. Guy. And a little fact about Tom Jones married for a number of years, mm-hmm. and the only deal that uh, he and his wife had is I know what you're doing. Just don't get anyone pregnant, wear a condom. Yeah, and don't give me a disease. That was it. I well, thought it was I didn't want to hear about it. That, that, that was it, too. Well, it's probably, it's probably cool, because I don't want to tell you. See, all the above, yeah. Tom Jones. Well, I mean, dude, I mean, women to this day throw panties on the stage. Yeah. Yeah. At 84 years old. Tom Jones yeah. used to have his own variety TV show, man. <laughs> and when he broke it down and started dancing. Oh, my God, you've man. You've never <laughs> seen anything <laughs> like that from a white man in your life. It was <laughs> James Brown-esque. I was going to say, he I don't know. He might be. He's from Wales, I believe, right? He's Welsh. He's Welsh. Oh, man. I did not know that. What? (laughs) That he's Welsh? Yeah. Yeah. He is smooth, man. He's got a lot of soul. No, he does. Tom Jones, he's he's alive. That's another weird one. Tom Jones is 84 years old. Prince would have been 66. That's sad, but I mean, that's Mm. that's the truth of the birthdays today. Okay, so vote now. If you follow us on Twitter at Men's Room Live, (laughs) you're going to hear either Kiss or Kiss coming up. It'll be Prince or Tom Jones. You watching him dance today? I just think it's funny. He's actually still performing. Oh, that's all he's going to yeah. He's going to do that till he dies, man. He's in Ireland this weekend. He's playing a show. Yeah, I just Googled it. It's like, yep. Uh, it's my birthday. I'm going to play a concert. Yeah, Sunday. He's playing in Ronnie, Ireland. If it comes to Seattle, I'm going to go see him, man. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I mean, he's 84. So, okay, when I went down to Reno uh, and I saw Glenn Campbell. Now, Glenn Campbell is getting up there in age, and he was maybe close to 80 or late 70s. But uh, this was one of the first stops on his goodbye tour. Like, seriously, I'm I'm Goodbye. I'm dying. Goodbye. And I have never sat in an audience like that age-wise in my (laughs) entire life. I saw Neil Diamond. Kids were in the MGM Grand, the arena in Vegas. I mean, you took kids to Vegas to watch that concert. Glenn Campbell... I don't know that anybody walked into that venue under their own power other than me and Dave. <laughs> right. I'm not kidding you. Everybody had an arm escort. Everybody had someone holding their hand. People were coming down with walkers, with canes. Is the damnedest thing. If a fight broke out, man, 
crap would be flying. Yeah. Right? It's just <laughs> one of those shows. All right, let's see here. Let's move on to our question. What ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206-803-ROCK. We'll start with this one. Fresh off the press. A man was eating breakfast with his wife when a cough and sneeze at the same time left him with a freak injury. Florida native's colon exploded, causing his intestines to fall out of his body. He's only 63 years old, but he did feel a wet sensation followed by a sharp pain. When he lifted his shirt, he saw several inches of bowel that were sticking out of a surgical wound. He had recently had abdominal surgery, but doctors insisted earlier his incision was well healed. Mm. So his wife called an ambulance, and upon arrival, paramedics said they observed a three-inch opening with large amounts of bowel protruding through it. God. He was immediately rushed to the hospital where surgeons were able to successfully return his bowel into his abdomen. Uh, he recovered in the hospital for six days, sent home, and experienced no further complications. His case is detailed in the American Journal of Medical Case Reports. It's a rare but serious complication of surgery, and it's also called disembowelment and occurs when a patient's internal organs protrude through an incision because of the wound and surgical site not healing all the way. Uh, experts, including those in the case report, cite coughing as a prominent risk factor for the complication. But he coughed and sneezed at the same time during dinner. Coughing, they say, was likely the cause, more so than the sneeze. I mean, whichever. Yeah. Two weeks before the incident, the man went under surgery for complications resulting from a previous battle with prostate cancer. So he had surgery which in which the bladder was removed. It was successful. Uh, on the morning of the medical emergency, the man had his wound site examined. Before that, had sutures removed. He and his wife then went to breakfast to celebrate his You've clean got to be bill of health. Me. Then he noticed his organs coming out of his abdomen. Yeah. Mm. He quickly covered the injury with his shirt and was going to drive to the hospital. They decided against that. The wife called 911, but apparently he's still in the hospital. At, well, he, he got out of the hospital after six days. Right. So this is just being reported now as it was a case that was put in a medical uh, journal. So no exact time frame on it, but I'm assuming it's happened within the last year. I would guess probably, yeah, in the last week or so. Yep. I'm going to guess that that probably ruined the appetite of other people at the diner. You know, yeah. you cough, you sneeze, and it's like, man, his guts are sticking out of his abdomen. I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to finish my egg. I don't know, though, man. It's like good French toast. You can fight through it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Wow, sucks for that guy. Yep. That's yep. awful. That's Look right. at his intestines. <laughs> ah. Man, oh man. I mean, I've sneezed with food in my mouth yeah. and sprayed my dad. I was a kid. I wasn't trying to. He was so mad. But it was an honest thing. Just, I'm chewing food. We're at the table and the sneeze came on. and <clears throat> He has a mustache and beard. So from my point of view, I just saw a bunch of scrambled eggs suddenly appear. Uh, like in the sideburns, the beard, the mustache. He was so pissed. And I'm like... I what do you want me to do, man? I've definitely sneezed and farted at the same right. time. I think the most bizarre one for me was uh, on an airplane. I was coming back from Florida. Uh, my Uncle Bill has a pool. All right. So he has a pool. So I am in the pool every single morning. As soon as I came back from whatever we were doing in the afternoon, I jump in the pool. I jump in the pool naked because he's got, you know, there's nobody back there. He lives alone with the dog. I get in the pool, jump in, take all my clothes off, then jump in the shower, put my clothes on, get ready to go to uh, to dinner or whatever we're doing. In the morning, I Is he the there when you're swimming naked? Yeah, I don't get it. I mean, you know, whatever. I don't know. My nephew is in my house using my pool. Like, put your trunks on. No, I, I leave your pubes in my pool. He don't care. He jumps in all the time naked, too. I get up in the morning, just uh, take a towel, wrap it around, jump in the pool. Pool's nice and cool. Kind of wake you up real quick, you know. Then I jump in the shower, start the day. So I did this for six days in a row. Um... I did not realize at the time, as far as what was going on with my ears and swimmers' ears, so to oh, speak. Oh, right, right. Okay, so it was, I definitely had water in my ear canal. I was using Q-tips and everything else. Um, not the worst thing in the world. But I get on the plane to head home, and I've already got that kind of sensation of, ah, my nose is stuffy, and, you know, like, I can feel congested, and I don't really know what's going on. And anyway, the plane takes off, and... We're headed to Seattle and it's a five and a half hour flight or whatever. And then when we are descending into SeaTac Airport, okay, I'm like, oh my God, my ears, like they're, they're, they're hurt. This is one right. of those where like, I, I feel like the cabin pressure is messed up in the aircraft. You ever had yeah. that sensation where sometimes your head is better than others and I don't know what the rhyme or reason is to it or whatever. But uh, in that situation, I always just 
hold my nose and go and and just try to blow right. the exhale sort of right so i did that and my right ear i was sitting on the window seat on the right side of the airplane thank god it was not out of my left ear okay because it was a passenger to my left when i did that the window beside me got and all the water shot out of my ear and on to and there was this amazing feeling of relief yeah 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 in my head and my pressure but i look over and i'm like I, I, so I took my, like, I took my shirt sleeve basically and tried to wipe off the pool water that I had shot on How the window. How much water would you say? A teaspoon, it, maybe? It felt like I had a hose on the inside of my brain and it shot out. I could hear it. I could feel it. I could feel the relief. And then I could hear, right. actually, because I've been talking to the guy beside me because he asked me, you know, we were just chit chatting. But I realized, like, I must have been screaming. Oh, bro. Yeah, I live in Seattle. I mean, because <laughs> I, my head was so stuffed up. And when that popped and that went out, now my left side, I, I started leaning to the left and just trying to see if I could get some of the water out. Now, that did not pop until I got at home. Because really? I kept doing Did you do the same thing? Because I knew, yeah, the left side. But that, that, that water just ran out of my ear instead of violently exploding <laughs> against the window. But, I mean, I had water in my head that I didn't know about. I really wish you had sprayed the guy next to you. I am very glad I did. So he was like, dude, what the hell was that? Did you spit on me? No, that was water say, in my ear. It just leaks out. That was one of the weirdest things. I've, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. That is I weird. used to take my head to the side and kind of like shake the water out or yeah, yeah. hit my head and get the water out of my ears that way. I had no idea water was getting in my ears. I should have known better. But you're not thinking about it at the I time. Mean, look, I, I swim all the time, but sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, ju and, just like, and just like the air pressure situation. But this was unbelievably painful. Like, I'm... Thinking to myself, I need a piece of gum, you know, all the tricks. Right, so, right all that crap. You know, whatever it's going to take to pop this thing. So I just pinched my nose, held my breath, blew it. <laughs> right on the side of the window. I was like, Jesus, God, man. That is weird, man. That was weird. Never had anything like that. Kind of like your farting penis. It was that, once look, a, man. That, that was, was a once in a lifetimer. It was medically induced. But, uh, yeah, wake up out of surgery. You have to wait, what, 24 hours before they take the catheter out. And uh, it's weird when you have the catheter in because you feel like you're always peeing. So you keep checking, but you're not, right? So finally, they wait 24 hours to get the catheter out. I now have the strength to get out of bed and go to the bathroom. So I saw to use a walker. I get into the bathroom. Like any guy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to aim my junk as to not urinate on the floor. And as soon as I touch the base, <laughs> so I mean, it. yeah, dude. And I mean, I freaked the hell out. I mean, every time I, I kept farting, it didn't matter how I touched it. So I'm buzzing the nurse in there, and, and when she walks in, I'm already laying into her, right? I'm like, look, man, I'm not one of these dudes that's about frivolous lawsuits and all that bull ass, but my penis is farting. She's like, so I'm like, no, no, you will listen to me. My penis is farting. And she's been seeing me naked for the last couple of days, so I have my junk in my hand, and I'm squeezing. I'm like, look at that. See what that? That is this. It's not supposed to happen, man. And I, I never farted before. I come to your goddamn hospital, and now my pain is fine, and I don't know how to get some life back, and I can't. Because your sex life is done, right? I'm just like, it, it's all ending, man. So she kind of lets me finish this diatribe. She's like, hey, dumbass, it's going to happen for like 24 hours. The catheter allows a lot of air into the shaft, which is not where it normally is. So every time you touch it, your body's doing what it can to expel the air. Yeah. So I'm still kind of like jittery. I'm like, okay, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> so I go back into the bed. But now that I knew I was like in a safe zone, it's so stupid. But you have nothing to do in a hospital, right? There's nothing to do. So I'm laying there, and I'm constantly just taking my hand and <laughs> <laughs> I'm just pushing down on the sheet. I mean, like, what else are you going to do? And then the, the really pathetic part is at some point you're expelling all the air. So when the farts got less intense, you know, it's just like <laughs> I was kind of disappointed. I'm like, well, it was kind of fun once I knew I was safe. Man. And also in your defense, oh, that happens. That I feel like that's information that you should tell somebody who doesn't normally have to deal with a catheter. You should absolutely. They tell you all the stuff you mm -hmm. don't want to know, right? right? You know any surgery you're going to have, you know there's an inherent risk, right? And they'll tell you, hey, this is what could happen. And it's like, man, I know this. I know this. Quick side note, are you going to put a catheter in? And if you do... Let a brother know that your penis is going to fart. Right. It is a jarring experience, man, when you don't know that's going to happen. I freaked the F out. Our question, what ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206-803-ROCK. 
It's warming up, folks, and about time to turn on your AC unit and cross your fingers. Or you can give up that moment of truth and switch to an American Standard heat pump system like I did. My place is on Comfort Autopilot thanks to American Standard. Energy efficient and reliable, my heat pump keeps things cool like the Arctic in the summer. And with energy incentives, I was able to save. Ready for the future of comfort? Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. For those in the market for flavor, there's Modelo Spike Tawas Frescas, a flavorful drink that's a modern twist on a Mexican street classic with four vibrant and refreshing flavors, pineapple, watermelon, hibiscus, and cucumber lime, made with a splash of real fruit juice. Modelo Spiked Aguas Frescas are perfect for any fiesta, small or big. Modelo Spiked Aguas Frescas, boldly authentic, vibrantly flavorful. Drink responsibly. Modelo Spiked Aguas Frescas flavored beers imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. Hibiscus contains juice only for color. Want to teach your kids financial literacy, but not sure where to start? Greenlight can help. With Greenlight, parents can keep an eye on kids' spending and saving, while kids and teens use a card of their own to build money confidence. As a parent, you can send instant money transfers, set up chores, automate allowance, and more. It's a convenient way to run your household, customized to your family's needs, and the easy way to raise financially smart kids. Get started with Greenlight today and get your first month free at greenlight.com slash odyssey. Gatorade. Studied. Tested. Proven. With over 50 years in the making, it's scientifically researched and game tested to help replace the electrolytes you lose in sweat. Buy two Gatorade 28-ounce bottles for $5 at 7-Eleven today. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Here's where we're on the tip of bodily functions. A woman narrowly avoided injury in North Ca- County in California when her companion pulled to the side of the freeway to let her vomit. Then another driver smashed into the back of their car, sending four people to the hospital. This happened at 3 a.m. I wonder why she had to puke. A white sedan had pulled over to let a passenger who was feeling ill vomit outside of the vehicle. Shortly after they pulled over, the driver of another sedan drifted into the right shoulder as they passed and smashed into the stopped car. Bang. Now, two people inside that car were trapped inside. They suffered major injuries, but nothing considering life-threatening. Uh, both of those people and a third occupant with less severe injuries, they were rushed to the hospital. Now, the woman who had gotten out of the car to vomit, she was miraculously uninjured. Yet she wasn't in the car. She was seen visibly upset, though, at the scene of the crash, making phone calls and speaking with officers. That probably sobered her up pretty quick. I was going to say, do you think it sobered her up, or do you think the cops had to deal with now a hysterically drunk person? Driver who rear into the car was also taken to the hospital for injuries. She suffered in the crash. Uh, She had been drinking. Police are still investigating whether she will be charged with DUI. Our question, what ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Christian. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 All right. So just for context of the story, uh, I am a loud sneezer. I'm sure you've been in your life. Uh, My brother is a notoriously loud sneezer. He sneezes so loud that when we were younger, my mother basically would plead with him not to sneeze in public. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm just like, what do you want me to do? I yep. can't control. I, I definitely but, know some loud sneakers. God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it from my grandma. She's a loud sneezer of the family. And uh, so last weekend, I went out to a disc golf tournament out in Oregon. Um, it was a great time. Uh, if you know much about disc golf, all the etiquette and the rules and stuff like that are very similar to golf. So when people are golfing, they're supposed to be very quiet. And man, when I tell the allergies were going up because the sun was out and <laughs> someone was going up to the tee box and I could feel it coming on, man. And I'm holding it as long as I can and you're getting the tickle and you're trying to breathe all steady. And I sw- <laughs> got up and they like threw the disc and right after it left their hand, it just all blew out. And when everybody's everybody heard it and everybody's head snapped right to me. <laughs> I'm just sitting there looking at the back of the crowd, like looking at everybody. He's like, I, we're good, guys. We're good. I held it. Did you affect his swing at all, or did he get it out of his hand in time? I think he got it out of his hand in time. I managed to hold it long enough. But, now, did- yeah, I, I think on the walk, we got to walk with the players for the round, and I probably had like well, three or four uh, okay. more seasons through the day. Let me ask you this. You know, based on the fact that yeah. you're, you're you're essentially watching people at a advanced professional level of playing this game. So, uh, if yeah. you play the game, 
And I know for a fact, since you referenced golf, it's like night and day. It's not It's not even the same sport watching the professionals play live compared to right, what right. the average golfer can do. Is that is that the same for Frisbee golf? As far as, like, they can hit 15-footers easy, no problem. Uh, they can throw one 250, yeah. you know, with you know, incredible accuracy. Is it that kind of stuff? It, yeah, it's pretty different. Yeah, I mean, I could throw a just probably like 300 feet, and a professional could throw it like 600 feet. Damn. All right, now let me ask you this. If you're a notoriously loud sneezer, have you ever sneezed and disrupted church or a wedding or a funeral or a test at school? <laughs> yeah, actually, I remember there was this one time I was at a at a, a concert, and it was like a, like a classical music. So, again, you're supposed to be quieter, right? And right as the song ended, and there's that moment of silence before people start clapping, that's when I sneezed. <laughs> and the director knew me personally, and he was like, oh, bless you, Christian. <laughs> are they, are they, <laughs> do, you, do you get a lot of bless you's? Because sometimes they're so loud and obnoxious, people right. don't even know how to react. Uh, that's Yeah, sometimes I get, sheesh, dude, what the hell? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Instead yeah. of bless you, it's the yeah, exact opposite right. of it. The natural reaction is, my God, man. Uh, what about, like, if you're on a point, like, are you conscious of this? If you know you're going to be surrounded by a bunch of strangers, right? So we're going to get on a flight. I sit down next to you on the flight. Are you thinking, oh, man, I hope I don't sneeze? No, I think after, you know, I, I'm I'm almost 30, and I've been sneezing a long time. I, I think it's kind of a... <laughs> I've been sneezing a long time. I'm a veteran. I'm a veteran. <laughs> okay. Uh, just curious. I, haven't had, I, I never had particularly loud sneezes. Like, so my brother's super loud sneezes, and it was always three in a row. I feel like everyone has their own way <laughs> that they see. Because, Mike, you have a definitive you're, sneeze. And you're a multiple sneeze. Yeah, it's always multiple. Usually, I'm just one sneeze and I'm good. My brother, it's always three in a row, always has been. So the last time I saw him, like, Father's Day, a year and a half ago, two years ago, he had a little sneezing fit, and it's, I'm like, it's still three in a row. It is unbelievable. But it's, mm-hmm. hit you, hit you, hit you. <laughs> you know, sir, it sounds like you're at a karate match or something. And it's like, no, it's just sneezing. Yeah. Oh, people, some people are a lot, they, they man. Last weekend, I, was, I spent the night in a hotel room uh, uh, in South Tacoma. And whoever's was the room beside me, man, I woke up at about 3 o'clock in the morning to take to use a bathroom. <laughs> Thank you. And I, uh, I, I went back into the bed. And I'm, and I, I don't know if the beds were back to back, like on the wall. Maybe, yeah. I, I don't know. Either way, I was like, oh, my God, dude. And there was that connecting door between okay, the two yeah. rooms. So I don't know if it was maybe somewhat coming underneath the door. What, what were they doing? Snoring. Oh. I mean, absolutely sawing logs to the point where I, I'm sitting in bed. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to go back to bed now. Because now you start I, paying I, attention I could to not it. believe how loud it was. And then there was the gagging for, like, you know, life that happened, you know, every yep. 30 seconds. That's another thing my and brother you know, does, the bad snoring. And But to your point, it's always... You worry that he's going to die because all you'll hear, and it's very rhythmic, right? But just. Oh, you see it more than you hear. Oh, my God. You okay, man? Yeah, I think I want to bang on the freaking wall. <laughs> Quiet down. I'm trying to sleep. No, he's like, dude, are you okay? <laughs> what, uh, what ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206 803 Rod. <laughs> my neighbor is older. All right. So he just has uh, some lung issues, and there, there are sometimes I like, I I mean, there's nothing. I don't think there's anything I can do, but I almost want to run him a glass of water, just coughing, oh. coughing, coughing, and it's just that dry kind of gives you goosebumps kind of cough. Yeah, it just sounds painful. Yeah, I know he was in the hospital like a couple of months ago for something, so I'm just like, ugh. But I don't know that it would wake me up, but definitely like when I'm in my living room, I can hear it. All right, now, as far as coughing goes, here's my question for everyone, right? There are things that we do every day. Your body has to play a part of it, and every once in a while, your body forgets how to do it. So something goes down the wrong pipe, right? And you're thinking, like, hey, throw. Yeah. I, I need you. You need to understand what I'm doing. How to, cause I'm not doing it on purpose. I don't think I could will myself to do that. But something goes down the wrong pipe. I don't care what else is in your mouth. You're going to blow it all out. And there's no warning, nothing, man. And I've seen it happen to people at restaurants, just yeah. from working with open kitchens. And you know they didn't do it on purpose, but they have food in their mouth, they're talking, they take a sip of wine, and obviously the wine hit the wrong pipe. And their dinner just flies onto their date. Well, you think the normal bodily functions, you, you've done them enough 
But you shouldn't f it well, up. You, yeah, but that but did someone bite your tongue? No, you did. You dumbass. bit your own tongue. Uh, it's in your else, mouth. Did someone else bite the inside of your cheek while they're eating? No, you did. It happens in rapid succession too. So you'll bite the inside of your doggone cheek, and then like three bites later, you yeah. do it again, and you just get pissed. Chomp yourself. on your own tongue. Like, yeah. I had to go to the dentist. What, I've been eating with it? solid food since I've been two. Right. You what, think like, I'd figure this out by now? Like two or three <laughs> weeks ago, <laughs> I had think. to go to the dentist, but they numbed me up. Right, but still, I got food. Came into work, no big deal, but I could not feel the right side of my face. And I tore through the sandwich, and I realized later when my face started kind of getting normal, the inside of my mouth's killing me, I almost chewed a hole through my cheek. Because apparently... Well, you can't feel it. You can't feel it. And every time I bit into the sandwich, I was grinding through my uh, inside of my mouth. And I'm like, God damn it, man. Yes, they warned me about this, and I didn't listen. I understand that part. Because they did say, wait to eat. And I'm like, I'm hungry. I'll be fine. Yeah. I was eating some ho- oysters on the half shell. This was years ago. And I thought maybe I got a piece of the shell in my mouth. So I, I give the oysters a little chew. Yeah. Because I can't. You've seen me try to swallow one whole. <laughs> little did I know, I had chipped a tooth. So oh. I crunched up and ate my own part of my tooth. Ooh. Uh, I've uh, done that before once. Because I didn't want it. Like, there was, like, a bunch of people there. We're, like, out on the deck. Like, right? Like, somebody had recognized me. So I was like, I don't want to be that guy spitting into a napkin. So I was like, <laughs> I'll crunch. I'll just fight through it. And then, like, the next day, I was like, oh, my God. I have my tooth. <laughs> Oh, that's when you pieced yes. it together? Yeah. And it was probably like a day later. I just had to go to the emergency doctor, dentist. <laughs> what ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Scott. Welcome to the men's room. Oh, bitches. Oh, Hola. Hola. Okay, I'll try to do this really quick and preface. I had carpal tunnel surgery in my left hand, and they did the tendons in the elbow as well. But what ended up happening is I ended up with cellulitis. So my arm looked like, might as well put an anchor tattoo on my arm. It looked like Popeye. So I was using the bathroom and uh, doing two, and I have to wipe with the other hand because I've got this full kind of wrap cast on my arm, and I threw out my back. <laughs> using the other arm to wipe your ass? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, can, I, I was, I was, it was off. I basically wanted to tell my wife, just dig a hole. <laughs> me, Like I said, I ended up infected in the uh, tendons in the uh, elbow that I had to get a line and do two weeks of home infusion. And I spent days in the hospital from the infection. I had to do a pick line when I got home and Two more weeks of antibiotic infusion and miss work. But throw your okay, back, so, wiping so, your ass. Yeah, but what, what, how did you do that? What, what did you do to cause that to happen? Carpal tunnel or coming yeah. out my back? Ah, uh, well, I understand how you threw out your back, but, how, <laughs> but like, <laughs> well, was that a, was that a, uh, an injury or was that something that was just happening over time? Over time, but uh, through the work that I did and not reporting it in a timely manner, so claimed it as a uh, well, you know, as a injury as opposed to trying to go after L and I for a work injury and going through all the hassle. So it, it was uh, just over time, my left hand, carpal tunnel, I could I could barely move my hand. I could barely close the fist. I could barely open. Oh, it's brutal. Wow. Okay. That sucks. I, crazy. I kind crazy. of understand that you throw out your back, though, man. When I busted my wrist a couple of years ago, I'm left-handed, of course, broke my left wrist. So you got to defer to your, your right side. And honestly, God, it sounds stupid. One of the toughest things to do day to day as far as having control over it is wipe your ass. And it, I cannot explain. The, I'll tell you, you can practice it because at home, you, kids. Because you don't Use feel like your it. other hand. But you change, You twist your body so much different. Yes. I mean, it, it's so stupid. Like, in theory, nah, you should just pivot one way or uh-huh. another. But when you go to wipe. But you have a muscle memory for how you pivot that thing. So when yeah. you try to, it's, it's like it's, yeah, it's like riding with your other hand, with your non-dominant hand. Sure, it's difficult. Your muscles don't do it right. It should be the same movements, but you haven't trained yourself to do it. Same thing with twisting. Like if, if you're not used to it, things are, you're going to be at different angles, man. That's a good way to look at it, Mike. Because here welcome. I am, like yeah, wiping my ass was the biggest. Struggle I mean, I had. yeah, I did it. <laughs> I did it a couple months ago. Same thing. Kind of tweaked my lower back on my right hand side, and it was like it was so painful when I tried to wipe. I just kept clenching. <laughs> but like I'm with, I'm with what you need. So to do. you, you need can't to, even you get right. 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 And I mean, I was in there. It seemed like, but I couldn't wipe with trying to wipe with your left hand is hard. I mean, I was like sweating. It was just like, oh god. 
But it, you know, like that shooting pain when you hurt your back? <laughs> so you would shut your ass completely off. I wasn't. And you I mean, can't yeah. actually wipe your ass. Okay. That is a weird problem to have. What ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206-803-ROCK. <laughs> Hello, Trent. Welcome to the men's room. Turn it down. Hola. Hola. Hello. Hola. Hola. Hello. 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 I don't think you can hear us. Okay, yeah, I can hear you right now. You can hear me. All right, go ahead. Tell the story, bud. Okay, another sneezing story. It's kind of embarrassing. You know, I was in the sauna. Anyways, uh, I sneezed, and I lost balance, and I was naked in the sauna. I was by myself, and my penis touched the rock. It got stuck to the rock. I had to pull it off, and uh, my girlfriend was coming over. I told her what happened, and uh, she had to take me to the emergency room, and I had to tell them the story about, you know, how, how it happened. It's kind of embarrassing. Do they laugh at you outright, or do they keep a straight face? Oh, he's and gone. he's gone. Wow, I saw that with actual lava rocks. That's, uh, that, <laughs> I didn't know they still did that. Did you? For a home, Have you been in a home sauna before? Yes. Did it have lava it's, rocks? Well, I mean, they're... It also could be, sometimes there's just like fake ones that's the heating mechanism. Yeah, right. So those are the ones that. you can pour water on, though. Because those actually If have a you're in a, a sauna, never pour water on anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, they used to do that in, in, the, in the old ones. They had a now, box of rocks, and they had a bucket in there with a ladle, and you poured it on that, there. You're in a steam room, my man. It was, well, people put on the steam. It was both. But it was still like that cedar line. It wasn't like a tile. Just steam trust room. me, because people, we, I, my old building had one, and people would F it up all the time. If you're right. in a steam room, fine. If you're in a sauna, do right. not put water on those things. Okay. <laughs> a lot of learn. people right now are going, oops. I mean, well, you're right. If it's an old school one with actual rocks, but it, usually it's just the heating yeah, mechanism. Yeah, that's an element. And right. people, I mean, you see it in hotel steam rooms right. all the time. People F those things up. <laughs> yeah. What ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206-803-ROCK. I can't count on people to read signs. So I'm just telling you, if you're in a sauna, don't wet stuff. Don't wet stuff, including yourself. Hello, Scott. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, you sexy bitches. Hola. So, it was, we flew over from Washington to uh, Wisconsin for a friend's wedding, and I was a moron and ate spicy Thai food right before we were going to get on a plane in a few hours. That is a rookie move, man. Just <laughs> tell me. That. I know better now. And it was awful. <laughs> I literally had to jump up every 20 minutes, and of course I had the window seat. So I was like, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. The whole flight home, which is about seven hours, and it was the most painful thing ever. Ended up with uh, hemorrhoids. After that, even though I was in my early 30s. <laughs> you think that's what led to the hemorrhoids? I think so, because I, was, I couldn't stop pooping. How many times do you think oh, yeah. you sat on the toilet on that flight? Oh, my gosh, probably 30, 40. How, had you been drinking? For real? Uh, well, yeah, it was a wedding, and All I right. drink. Um, but, uh, not, not, <laughs> I mean, look, not you're right. Day, I that day. Even people I that don't, I was going to say, even people that don't drink a lot at weddings will get drunk. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And the worst thing about it was, is, so we came in for a landing into Seattle and I had to go to the bathroom. There was, there was nothing. I was either going to do that or poop my pants. And so I went up and I got in the, uh, laboratory and, uh, the stewardess was not door and was like, sir, sir, you need to take your seat. And I'm like, if I get off the toilet, I am going to poop on in my pants or on everyone. And she was like, sir, brace, we're about to land. So I landed while I was sitting on the toilet. <laughs> wow. How? <laughs> it was rough. Did you even rough. make it to baggage claim or did you have to take another toilet break? So I ran off the plane like literally i i did my constitution on the plane and then once we got up the gangway i i had to go directly to the bathroom again man it was rough yeah was very very bad and a seat tag, even at a baggage claim that you could go another eight times it never happens when you're at home and it's easier and more right. convenient you are always traveling it's always an away game when that type of situation happens well, and you know how uh, 
you know how a uh, airplane toilet paper is. It's like sandpaper. Uh, so yeah, it was it was a rough time. Were you Never sitting had- with family in the same aisle, or were they strangers? It was just uh, myself and my wife that were flying together. Uh, I think she was just my girlfriend at the time. Uh, and then there was one other dude that was like, man, I feel your pain. I'm so sorry, man. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I, yeah. <laughs> Even if you're at home, though, and you're having a bad bout of that, like, still miserable. It's it, better it's still because miserable, you're home. Yeah. But you're home, man. Yeah. That's like anything, right? It doesn't matter. You can have a cold if you have a fever. If you get bad news, I would just rather be home if I have to deal yeah. with something like that. I was on the golf course. It's probably six months ago. The first time I'd ever tried a Zin. I was trying not to smoke as much as I normally do on the golf right. course. So I was trying to space those out. This guy had some Zins. All right. So I'm like, let me try one of those, man. I stick that thing in my lip. About 60 seconds go by. And I'm like, I got to poop. <laughs> I got to poop now. I mean, wow. I got to poop. Cigarette, a little bit of a trigger. This thing is like, poop now. <laughs> what ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206-803-ROCK. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids do a classroom? Homes.com knows these are all things you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows granger has got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. You don't just live in your home. You live in your neighborhood as well. So when you're shopping for a home, you want to know as much about the area around it as possible. Luckily, Homes.com has got you covered. Each listing features a comprehensive neighborhood guide from local experts. Everything you'd ever want to know about a neighborhood, including the number of homes for sale, transportation, local amenities, cultural attractions, unique qualities, and even things like median lot size and a noise score. Homes.com. We've done your homework. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows Granger's got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. It's time to dust off your glove, grab your bat, and hit the road for some baseball. But before you head to the game, make sure your ride is in top shape. At Axton Automotive, our skilled mechanics ensure your vehicle is running smoothly so you can focus on cheering for your team. Don't strike out this spring. Get your car ready for baseball season. Visit AxtonAutomotive.com or call 360-685-7976. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. 
99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Coming up, we'll drink and toast in the weekend. It's Bad Choice Friday time. You know it's Bad Choice Friday. It's Bad Choice Friday. You know it's Bad Choice Friday. Hey, man, this is your fault. Damn on. And today we celebrate Kiss and a couple of birthdays on a Bad Choice Friday. First up, he would have been 66 years old today. Give it up for Prince. Prince and Kiss taking on a man who does turn 84 years old today. That would be the one and only Tom Jones. You don't have to be rich to be my girl. You don't have to be cool to rule my world. Ain't no particular sign I'm more compatible with. I just want your extra time and your kiss. Vote now if you follow us on Twitter at Men's Room Live. It's going to be Kiss or Kiss coming up. On your bad choice Friday. That's, that should be how Kiss takes the stage every time now. Just have the Tom Jones Kiss. Kiss. He does get a little uh, like Nicolas Cage on that when he says Kiss. Kiss. Just don't have Mike Tyson do it. Ladies and gentlemen, Kiss. <laughs> Our question What ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206 803 Rock. Hello, Ron. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, guys. Happy Hola. Friday. Hola. Hola. I uh, appreciate your show. You guys crack me up all the time. Oh, thank you, man. Um, so 2010-ish, I received a flu shot that had the H1N1 combination in it, and I got paralyzed. It's called jean -Barre. And I was in the hospital for like two weeks in an ICU. And then shortly thereafter, I was on the uh, medical floor, and I had been cooped up for probably like a month, and they let me go down in a wheelchair to the lobby and but I uh, because of where it stopped the the paralyzation goes from the top of your feet all the way up to your shoulders if it's not Damn. abated. All right. And it stopped at my diaphragm, so all of everything from my diaphragm down was affected. And they were giving me these seven big like Coke bottle, like two liter <laughs> bottles of what they call Go Lightly, so I would have a bowel movement. Is that the same and stuff that you take before a colonoscopy? Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, very, supposedly very effective. Yes. But <laughs> I had seven of them, right? Oh and I hadn't gone yet. So, I, anyway, I go down to the lobby, and um, all of a sudden, as soon as I get off the elevator in my wheelchair, I'm still, I have a gown on, I'm in a wheelchair, and I'm like, oh, crap, I got to go to the bathroom. And I filled this wheelchair. <laughs> it was oh. full. Oh, oh man. <laughs> It was horrible. <laughs> Tell me this was in line at the cafeteria. <laughs> uh, no, no, I hadn't even made it that far. It was just, as soon as I like, wheeled out of the wheelchair, all of a sudden, oh, my God, and I tried to get into the bathroom with the wheelchair. I was trying to push it open, roll myself in, push. It didn't work. So, anyway, massive explosion in this wheelchair. <laughs> and then I had to turn around and take the elevator back up, and it was filled with people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, someone said, Somebody pooped their pants. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> Somebody crap. Well, did you feel... Everybody in the elevator was, like, looking at me because it was dripping out. I mean, it was horrible. Dude. It was out the was all over. How do you... Okay, so you can feel your insides because based on where your diaphragm is compared to where your lower side is. But you, yes. you could feel the urge that you needed to go to the bathroom. Now, when you actually use the bathroom, could you feel that? Like, did you feel yeah. better? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But you could not I, use I your legs. No, not at all. I, I I couldn't walk for... It took a year to be able to walk again. Damn. All from a flu yeah, shot. Horrible. All from a... Well, it's... I mean, to be honest, it's not necessarily the flu shot. Uh, Guillain-Barre is an autoimmune response to overstimulation, so your body starts shutting down. Oh, the okay. hell What's is going, going on today? I don't oh, know. Man. I wouldn't have really asked the guy who burned his penis in the sauna. But he I know. I had questions. Dong. This Did guy he say had he a few had questions. John Barre? Jo I think John Barre, is that what he said? I think so. It's yeah. one of those things where I'm like, I don't know what it is. I understand how it figures into the story, so I don't need to remember how to say it. That's just too fun a name for something that bad. I agree. They should give things oh, worse. I mean, I'm no, John Barre Ramsey or something. You know? 
That's, that's where my brain goes. That's, that's not where you went. Cute. Yeah, I thought like a jamboree. The Boy Scouts. Yeah, jamb- no, I, that's not where my brain jamboree. Went. Jamboree. The jamboree. That's man. what I was saying. You go jamboree, Ramsey. Sounds like a great dish. Hey, hey, jamboree. I would try jamboree. Hell yeah. Actually, what am I saying? He just explained what it is. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have filled, lost focus. I filled the whole I, wheelchair. I the veteran is your buddy that has drugs. It's a stew. Your jamboree. Go to my buddy jamboree. Yeah, <laughs> jamboree, man. What ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206 803 wrong. Start being a Chad Hanks. Ciao, Bore. Yeah. Ciao, Bore. I'm going to start saying that to people. Hello, Rachel, as a greeting. Hello, Rachel. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitches. Hola. Dude, if you said it aggressively to like a very plain white person, they might just be like, all right, cool. Ciao, Bore, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Social experiment coming this weekend. Oh, uh, Jabberay. <laughs> Jabberay, brother. Jabberay. <laughs> if your team scores, Jabberay, man. Jabberay. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, Rachel, what went terribly yeah. wrong for you? Orgasm. Your orgasm okay. went wrong? Yes, it did. How does an orgasm go wrong? I'm curious to know. Well... I'm having personal sexy time. <laughs> Pers- personal sexy time. <laughs> Why do women That's make worse. everything sound yeah. cute? Guys are like, hey, man, I'm going to go J.O. Right, yeah. or How does, this, does this involve uh, uh, accessories? Yes. Okay. Mm. Oh. How many? Yeah, how many accessories? <laughs> Only one's required. Okay. All right. All right. What do you call it? Does it have a name? No. All right. Sound like Paul or something. You're so impersonal, Rachel. DK Metcalf. I know. No. Oh, I know. It's a, it's, a, it's a problem with me. All of the guys say that I only see them for their penis. <laughs> All right. Well, I've never had that wow. problem. Okay. <laughs> that's a very nice way to use another term I would have. That's the problem. <laughs> so, so what went wrong? <laughs> so as I reached completion. Did you scream you know, John Beret? Kind of everything. <laughs> how everything tightens up. Sure. Well, at that moment, my head exploded in excruciating pain. Well, and well. apparently, the act of everything tightening up um, caused the uh, viral meningitis that I had somehow contracted to become very, very active. I, I don't know. You orgasmed your way worked. to meningitis. <clears throat> Nope, had meningitis first. Orgasm just made it worse. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so did it cause like a migraine or did something pop? Um, it's like the most excruciating um, concussion you've ever had for a month. So huh. when you go to the house, obviously you talk to a doctor about this, right? Yes. And did you explain to them what led to you, uh, your head exploding? No, but I came up with something that worked in place just as well. I told him I sneezed. All right. Really? No. Okay. I Rachel, mean, look, I, man, it's your do- I just feel, look, I'm sure it doesn't make okay, a difference. Look, but my but- kid was in the room with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay. All right. All right. How old was the kid? Uh, 30. All right. Well, that's fair. Okay. Was, <laughs> now, all, all orgasms are not created equal. Was this an exceptionally yeah. good one or was this just an average, you know, whatever? You know, it seems like it was an exceptionally good one. Kind of hard to remember because of the pain that came so fast and so bad. And did that kind of knock you out? No. No, I got to stay awake and enjoy that pain. Did you, now you said this headache lasted for like a month? Yes. Did you not masturbate during that month? I didn't do much of anything during that month. Again, think of it like the worst concussion you've ever had. You're sick. You're in pain. Even holding down water was a problem. Yeah, I was going to say, were you were, were admitted you, to the hospital because I was dehydrated? Were you nauseous? Oh yeah. And how long? How long did you wait to go to the hospital? <sighs> Probably two days, because when I realized I could still see and all of that, I'm like, okay, I'm not having an aneurysm. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's wrong, but it'll pass. That's sure. what I thought. Yeah, I mean, that, and, that's pretty normal. Yeah, about, I guess about a day and a half later, my kid who was staying with me is like, Mom, if you don't stop throwing up, I'm taking you to the hospital. I said, I think you better take me to the hospital. And the pain was so bad that they actually did a spinal puncture on me, and I didn't notice. 
Jesus, man. man. So you yeah. have a hard time telling your son this, but you have no problem telling, I don't know, uh, tens of thousands of people on the air. Because <laughs> none of them They're are her son. in the room with me. I see that. Yeah, I'm okay. with you. I, I feel now, more comfortable what, what does meningitis do? You always hear about it here the night. What exactly does it attack? What does it affect? So the um, it attacks the spinal fluid. It basically inflames it, causes it to expand, which is what causes the headache because it's putting pressure between your brain and your skull. Okay. okay. Did you tell any of your big penis boyfriends why they couldn't come over during that month <laughs> and what you had done? No. No, that was just between me, my vibrator, and my doctor. All right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you didn't even tell your doctor. You told your doctor you sneezed. Right. Out of her vagina. Tens the of thousands of... Between us. You just told tens of thousands of people what happened. Or, but you won't tell your doctor the truth? Rachel, okay, Rachel, It's been Rachel. almost 10 years, so, you know. All right. Okay. Well, Rachel, if it makes you feel any better... What do they say? Yeah. It's like an orgasm and a sneeze roughly Are release the same, the same endorphins. Have you ever... Um, like the relief you feel yeah. when you sneeze is about... So kids, if it's, you're wondering what an orgasm feels like, you know when you sneeze and you feel that much better. You ever had someone reach down there real quick and you sneeze? What? <laughs> grab a hold of Wait, what? No. When what? you sneeze? No. Have you ever had someone grab you down there? All right. All right? Maybe like you're like, whoa, and all of a sudden, ah, you... No. no. Someone I, grabs I, I, your I, penis and you sneeze? Absolutely. It's what? happened to me. It's happened to me a couple times. Uh, really? Because I'm just like... <gasps> Like, you know, so uh, if you're startled, yeah, right? Yeah. Exactly. Like, ah, you. Where are it, you walking around with your junk out? The people are just grabbing it. <laughs> oh, you know me, Ted. <laughs> Disney World. I have a shirt on that says, "Please grab my penis." <laughs> Watch me sneeze. <laughs> that is a, a, Like, what percentage of the time are you going to sneeze when somebody? It was very rare, but it's happened a couple times. I am not kidding. And is it? Why I, would I lie? I don't think you're bragging. Yeah, but it's not a brag. Is it one sneeze or is it like a, a just a one. triple? A just one. Just one. So like, do you need to put a mask on where you're about to get into sexy time here? Otherwise, people are going to get like German in their it's, face. It's, it's uh, let me know if you're going to grab my penis. Yeah, I'll have to check. Just, <laughs> I mean, I know. I just want you know. I want to have fun. Ah, just give me a warning. <laughs> just need to know. <laughs> What ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206 803 wrong. I'd say that's a good one, Miles. I know. Yeah. I'm not proud of it. That was a fine answer to the question. Yeah. Sorry to just blow snot all over If you me. grab my penis and I don't know it's coming, uh, hey, I'm going to sneeze. If you see me in a bar later, let's try it. <laughs> hey, I'm Dave, man. Listen to the show. Give me that thing. <laughs> <laughs> if you see Miles, grab his penis. See what happens. <laughs> it's going to happen at the next world tour. I know. Ah, <laughs> what's Miles doing? Hey, some people grab his penis. Now, have you ever sneezed when you grab your own penis? No. Because I know I'm going to grab it. <laughs> that's okay. It's, it's not an element of surprise. I mean, I guess next time I sneeze, I'll grab my junk. No, it's it, I, oh. the junk comes first. Yeah. But it's not you grabbing it. So, so it has to be someone else right then. You'll sneeze. Yeah. So if grab my walking. penis right now, I'm not going to sneeze. You wouldn't expect it. <laughs> Something's coming at you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's not a sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> you'll sneeze my fist at you. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's cool. the, to me, that's a normal reaction. But what if I, what if I get Somebody home? grabs my junk. It's just like, I, sorry, I didn't mean to punch you, but yeah. you grab my junk. That is more normal than sneezing. But seriously, man, still let go. <laughs> does, it, does it happen with other surprises, Miles? Like no. If, like if no. you get jumped on the no. street. Absolutely not. Is, is your reaction just to sneeze the, in their we're face? We're back to the correlation of the orgasm and the sneeze. <laughs> it's that. <laughs> what? I mean, yep. <laughs> there's a correlation, but I don't know anyone else who sneezes. When they get their penis you, unexpected. Now, to be fair, I don't even know how many times I've unexpectedly had my junk grabbed. Sure. You know, to have any real record of this, but... Miles, have you ever sneezed at the point of orgasm? No. Huh. Figured that correlation might, might stick across. That was I think it's either strong. one side or the other. I think Three, two, one, lift off. I, yeah. I think in the urban legend is if you orgasm and sneeze at the same time, you die. <laughs> 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 one side, the other side. <laughs> it's too much for your body. Causes, causes negative shuts everything causes off. Causes a negative pressure. <laughs> How did he die? He sneezed the climax. <laughs> he was relieved. I mean, not a full-on cramp, but sometimes right before that moment, I'll get like a little like a like, tingle, twinge. nose tingle, no, like a twinge. Oh, like yeah. am I in that? I mean, obviously we know what it, where I'm. Positions, yeah, right. I'm just like, oh, no, that's not a. Oh, we're ready. <laughs> Let oh, that means you're crazy. getting close. Yeah. Oh, so your whole body's like, oh, ah. let's go. Oh, yeah. Breathe, yeah. Breathe back. Yeah. I hate to admit it. At 43, sometimes I'm still surprised. Like I don't know why. I know how sex works. You're surprised with what? Just if it's been, you know, maybe a little time. Just like, what are you giggling about? Like that, ah, just awesome. You, kind of you giggle during you? sex afterwards sometimes. Do you? Just happy? Yeah. No, you don't. And I don't know why I'm always surprised. Like <laughs> you giggle after sex. <laughs> you never giggle? No. I, I often giggle. I, I will giggle. I do. A, do, I, do a, I will giggle in nervousness too. Sometimes, really, like in a really like tense situation. 
Here what's he's like, I don't know why you're laughing. It's not funny. It's like it's not funny at all. The whole conversation is ridiculous. So I'm just laughing because I can't believe we're even talking about it. Right. But yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it's like a fear. Uh... <laughs> you know, a fear. All right, Mike. A fear. Uh... Nervous flagpole. Yeah. So if you can't, get an I, erection, I don't you, do you, it. You giggle. What's that? So if you can't get an erection, you giggle. Oh hell no! Okay, why would I, I giggle about that? I don't, I don't think know. anybody giggles. Yeah, it's like, what you do it. Right. <laughs> Give it a second, baby. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm just saying. Sometimes when you're finished, you're in a good mood. So yeah, hell yeah. Giggle. All right, Mike. All right. Which which would you rather have a chronic case of? Okay. Uh, because they're both related to sex. Of course. We have the Miles Montgomery. She unexpectedly oh. grabs your and you're gonna sneeze. Right. Or we have the Ted Smith. Where when you're done, you just giggle. I. I I'm already with Ted on that one. Really? You're oh, taking yeah. the giggle? You giggle yeah. after sex? Yeah, from time to time. I'm Do in a great own. mood. Right. I mean, I'm in a really, really wife, good mood. My but wife I don't and move. enjoy our intimate time. So, yeah, sometimes there's a little laughter afterward. Huh. Yeah. Sometimes it's my performance. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have, say, right? Yeah, 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 like, I might have, like I said, might have gone through a little bit of dry spouse. <laughs> and I was like, I. I know everybody says this, but I swear it's like usually this part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but like, I'm laughing. It's not like just get, like get, let's see the sandwich. Give me give me a right. shot. I just start walking around high five people. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've been told that one too. What? Don't high five me. Don't high five me. Oh, you give a girl a high five. I tried. It was good work after sex. Yeah, that's a routine, dude. Every yeah. time you guys high five. That's why he's married and I broke up yeah. with him. <laughs> Every time you say Jean Beret, I'm going to. Steve and I just fist bump. You know? <laughs> and giggle at each other. Good job, bro. Good, 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 good. <laughs> we we dab yeah, up real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew you were ready when you sneezed. <laughs> what, uh, yeah. You ready, Miles? What, <laughs> what ordinarily body? Ordinary bodily That's how I get them excited. Went terribly wrong. 206 803 Rock. Come on. Hello, Billy. Welcome to the men's room. Hello, Billy. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hola. 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 Ah, all right. So um, I'm an engineer that works for one of the largest, you know, manufacturer computer companies. And I was doing some work at uh, one of the largest uh, online web places. And this is right after COVID. And uh, that was the largest time I, of COVID we've had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything's right large. After. Yeah. I had the largest the dinner you've ever seen last night. <laughs> <laughs> and the largest girlfriend. <laughs> yes. And uh, anyways, I really had to go to the bathroom and and I ran to the bathroom and this has never happened to me and I, I, I went to the bathroom and when I got up I had a like a one foot to one and a half foot rooster tail over the back of the wall <laughs> of the actual toilet. <laughs> How did you over even the, do over that? the over the back? Over the back. I don't know how. I, I don't know how. Where is your I, anus <laughs> located on your body? How did you do? I wasn't, I wasn't leaning forward. Or, I have no idea. I just that I felt so bad. Do you think that you didn't even clean it up? Were you so far back that it just kind of splashed off the back of the seat and went upward? I don't. I don't. I don't. I think I was in normal positions with that, that I would have thought, but. Uh, so I quickly took a picture and sent it to my buddy. And, uh, <laughs> was it the largest mess they'd ever seen in this particular bathroom? Well, the funny thing is, is that there was cleaners coming through the bathrooms like every five minutes because like, usually there's a staff there of like 10,000 people, but there's only like 50 people there. So I know one of those cleaners knew it was me and I know they probably <laughs> hate me, but I don't care. They don't like you. They don't. I no. would never leave an empty coffee cup on your desk because they're putting something in it, man. I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> You know, normally I'm against the idea of having Because uh, oftentimes you do go in the bathroom and say, how is this possible? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, normally the idea of cameras in a bathroom is bad, but I would like to see exactly what happened in that moment that he did that. Oh, even like on the interior of the bowl, here at work, oh. I have gone in the back and used the bathroom myself and saw an obvious stain on the porcelain on the inside yeah. of the toilet. All right. And then I use the bathroom on top of it. I flush. It's a, it's a hardy one. It all goes down perfectly. But that little sticky guy that was there before me, <laughs> yeah. he remains. Still there. So then I'll open the door, which triggers the automatic flush again, and it'll flush again. And I don't know if someone ate glue or what the deal is, <laughs> right. that bad boy ain't moving. It is right. Ain't glue. Yeah. It is amazing. It just, I, it's unflushable. I had one of those here a couple of years ago, man. And I did not know it was going to be like that. Knew I had to go to the bathroom. Just bad stomach and... Boom, right? Get up, wipe my ass. Same thing. A little sticky dude hanging out in the back. No worries. Water comes down. And I'm like, oh, no. And it was like a rock in the river, man. So I actually took the time 
just to clean it off of there. But it was it's like toothpaste it in the like sink. Gum. Yeah. It starts to bother you. <laughs> Why didn't someone clean that up? <laughs> what ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206 803 Rock. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids do a classroom? Homes.com knows these are all things you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows Granger's got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Yep, just got my Ecobee smart home. When nosy Ned next door came over with questions about it. Ecobee, what's that? You should get the system I've got, he said. I told him Ecobee is really smart and listed off a few great Ecobee features. He went from smug to envious real quick. Turns out Ecobee is a lot smarter than his better-known smart home. So I consoled him and said, Ned, get yourself a smarter home. Ned's over a lot now. Visit ecobee.com today. 99.9 KISW. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Coming up, the exciting return of Ted versus the FCC right after emails on our question, what ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206-803-ROCK. couple of quick texts there. Uh, the disease we were talking What do we keep calling it now? Jambari. So it's Giambure. Giambure. Somebody's trying to give us a pronunciation. Someone has sent us information about oh. it. So we can learn all we can. Uh, Miles, you have been dubbed Sneezy McPenis. <laughs> cool. And We're having a penis squeezing our booth uh, at our next event. <laughs> yeah. Midroom World Tour. On up. And then finally it says, I dated a woman for a couple of weeks that would fart at the point of orgasm. That relationship did not last long. Uh, no. hmm. I mean, at least you know it's real. You know it's real. Or not. Think about it. Think about what that would sound like, right? Yeah. You're having sex with this chick. Ted's like, oh, yeah. Oh, Ted. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, let's giggle. Still going. Sorry. It was really good. You're that good, Ted. <laughs> There's no way it was that gross yeah. and wet every time. <laughs> what uh, ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206-803 wrong. Also, see that? There's no way she had an orgasm every time. So at a certain point, I'd be like, honey, you're just farting on me. <laughs> It's, it's it, you know what I mean? But it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's like, just an afternoon quake. You're saying how good it is, but you didn't fart. Oh, that, no, no, no. But you fart when you are Liar! I, I didn't get you there. Uh, and then also, if I'm canyon yodeling, like, can you try not to, right? Man, that's the whole thing right there. Like, no, please don't do it in my face. Hello, Shane. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, hola, bitches. Hola. <laughs> First time caller, long time listener. Appreciate Welcome it. to the show, Thank man. You, man. All right, so here's the deal, man. You know, back, I'm 55 years old, so I, this is back when I was in my 20s. That's back when the class. Oh, I already have my finger on it. Already have my finger on it. Thanks, you Coke can't guy. Say on the radio. Oh. Sucker. Mother. Strong. And please keep those words in mind when calling. Now, back to the program. All right, Shane, listen, man. You can talk about the pure cocaine of the 80s all you want, but you can't cuss. Hey. This is a great story. Okay, anyway, back in the day, this stuff was good. So we're on our way, me, my buddy, Danny, and Lance, we're on our way to Reno. So I got to take the crap because that stuff is good. It makes you want to poop. You know what I mean? So we pull over to the convenience store, take the crap, 
I go into the bathroom. There's stuff on the toilet on the toilet seat. I'm not going to sit on that thing. I got to hover. And so as I'm hovering, I hit, let thing lets loose, and it blows all over the wall, all over everywhere. It blows so bad that I can't clean it up, man. So all I do is like clean my ass. Off I go out the door, and sure as heck, here comes somebody in the door. Oh, my God, they start freaking out. So get in the car, Danny. Get in the car, Lance. We got to go. They're all pointing at me. And I- <laughs> That's the guy. Burned it out out of that convenience store. It was terrible. That was my bodily function, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, you know cocaine. the cocaine was real, real good. Real good. Yeah, well, they're also cutting it, obviously, with some laxatives at the time. Yeah. Make you poop yourself. What ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206-803-ROCK. So which is it? Is it the good stuff that makes you poop, or is it cut with stuff? Both. A little bit uh, of both. Right. I mean, I think good coke probably <laughs> make you poop, but they definitely use laxatives to cut it. That's what I've heard. That's what people have told me. I've never had that experience. That's what it tastes like. Yeah. Yeah. In the back of your throat. Again, we've been told. Hello, Kathy. Welcome to the men's room. Hello. Oh, hello. 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 Yes. Happy Friday. Hell Thank yeah. You. Hey, I'll, I'll try to keep this short. But man, oh, my, my son and I went to the, I wanted to have a special outing with my son. He's 33, and I wanted to take him to a Blondie concert. So we went to the Tulalip, from Gig Harbor to the Tulalip Casino, and we, we had a, a room and everything. I mean, I went, I went all out. And I wore a beautiful, beautiful, really cool jacket. And that's going to come up in the story. Because uh, we had a great night. He was winning. He kept buying me drinks. And I kept drinking and not eating. And then in the morning, I felt so, oh, I had to work at noon. I felt so, so wasted in the morning. But I wanted to rally. I didn't want to show my son, Nick, that I was, uh, you know, Hurting as bad I, as you are. Yeah. Yeah. So we had eggs Benedict. I thought that would help. <laughs> and uh, oh, and then we had the, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. And I weigh about 117 pounds. So I was feeling a little bit better. And on the way home, I felt like I had to, you know, I felt like I, I, I felt like a little bit like I had to go use the restroom. But I thought I could wait. And, um, <laughs> When we got to Gig Harbor, he says, you want to come in, Mom, and use the bathroom? I said, no, no, I'm fine. Anyway, between the time that I said I'm fine, I thought, I got to find a restroom. I have to find a restroom. I'm looking around in my car for something to crap in. I was so, I was sweating. Why didn't knew- you just use his bathroom when he offered? Because I didn't really have to go that bad. Oh, okay, all I right. I just wanted to get it going. I mean, I didn't think I had to go that bad. I've got pretty good bowel control. Cause I'm That's a, a strength a in adulthood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh you're a runner. God. Okay. Yeah, well, you have to, anyway. So I've got pretty good control of my bowels. I don't usually, you know, anyway. So I went to Costco. I thought, where's a bathroom I can use? Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Once again, bedroom colors, here are the seven words you can't say on the radio. What's up with the grandparents today? Just say poop. Sucker, mother, poop. poop, and please keep those words in mind when calling. Now, back to the program. So okay. I started to go, and I had, like, winter white pants on with this beautiful jacket. And I, I walked into the Costco, and I have to walk in front of all the registers to go to the bathroom. And I'm walking really fast with my legs together. I got into the stall, and I, I went to sit down, and it was all over. It was over. I could not hold it. I, I crapped myself behind the stall door. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, what am I going to do? So I, oh God, this is where it gets really primitive. I started to rinse my clothes off after I flushed the toilet. I used those teat, those seat liners and I tried to wipe up as much as I could. And I know this is really bad. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lady too. And I, Sounds I, I like had it. to do something. <laughs> How am I going to leave with these people? What? It sounds, I, like, sounds like, it. like it. Real lady. <laughs> Don't forget, I'm a lady. I crap myself out. She's a lady. Myself, lady. She's a lady. <laughs> yeah, it, it knows oh, no oh, gender. Oh. Put it that way. This kind of thing knows no gender. 
So I wrapped around that beautiful jacket that I had because it had a print on it. I wrapped it around my waist and I walked out of there. I mean, I know. I just hoped. I mean, nobody had said anything, but I know there's cameras. And I know. Well, what is someone going to say? Well, she walked in with white pants and walked out without them on. Right. (laughs) Oh, I know. I was really thinking about just, I mean, I, I didn't know what to do to save face. I walked out there and I got into my car and I just sat there. I was almost in tears. <laughs> and, I, and I work with, uh, here's, weird, here's what's really weird um, or ironic. I work with highly, highly disabled individuals. So I called my uh, care team and I said, I, as soon as I get there, I'm going to have to use the shower. So I had to wear their clothes <laughs> for the rest of my shift. Oh my gosh! I'll you never couldn't go that, home though. first. No, because it was like, so close to noon. I had so much pride. I'm not gonna. I'm right. not gonna listen. Anyway, I, if I'm a I boss showered. and you call me and you say, "Look, man, I'm gonna be 20 minutes late," and I say, "Well, what's going on, Kathy?" and you say, "Look, honestly, God, I just crap my pants on a Costco bathroom." I go, "You know what? I should have just said it. Yes. I should have just said it." But I said, "I, I, uh, her name. Well, I'll just say, Mary. I am." I'm so sorry. I had an accident. And she's like, oh, Kathy, are you okay? She thought it was a car accident. And I said, um, no, a different kind of accident. And anyway, she had my back. And, um, but yeah, needless to say, I had a very steep dry cleaning bill that month. You should have you should have, you should have bought the $45 the Blondie uh, concert t-shirt. You know, that way you'd have oh something to wipe your, wipe your car with. <laughs> Wait, you said you still have, you took that coat to dry cleaning? Well, I washed it first, but ah, then okay. I had it professionally cleaned. All right. And it's fine. I mean, I still, it's got a real kind of a comic book print on it. It's real loud and busy and fun, and it just looks like the 80s blondie. And um, But I had kind of the white in the jacket um, in my, that I wore in my pants. I mean, I look really good. That's all that matters. Until but you poop yourself. I look, I look good. <laughs> yeah. I hope the dry cleaner's yeah. like... Ah, uh, Kathy, we can pull out of uh, we can pull out of jacket. You left, we washed two times. You left First out. time, not enough. Lot of poop on jacket. Couldn't what? read comic book paddle because it was covered with poo. What <laughs> ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? Two zero six eight zero three rock. Hello, Andy. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, Michola. Hola. Hola. So super. Subaru driving, bicycle riding, apologetic not, listener. All right. Thanks for a positive Friday. (laughs) That started strong. Thanks, VD. All right. So here's my story. It is a bodily function that went wrong, but kind of right. Go for it, buddy. So back in the, I'd say, Mid nineties, working in restaurants, partying every night after after shift at, at the corporate restaurant. Uh, went to a party one night. We're hanging out, had shifties, did our thing, uh, smoked a bit and drinking, and I had definitely overdone it. And somebody handed me a shot of Maker's Mark. Oof. I threw it back like like a boss. So like a bungee? Oh, oh, okay, I got you. Threw it back like a boss, but it did not stay down. It came right back up, but I still had the shot glass in my hand. <laughs> Somehow, I managed every drop right back in that shot glass. That's all you threw up? That's all I threw up. That's all that came up. Huh. Your body's just like, no to the makers. No. I'll let you keep yeah. everything else, just no to the makers. Oh, man, that makers, man, it'll give you the mouth sweat. But typically, though, man, when you do a bungee shot, that's all that comes back. Right? Even if you've eaten and a you, big meal. And you know. And you, you, know, you take that shot of tequila, and for whatever reason, your body's not expecting it. Like, the only thing that comes back is the tequila. Yeah, like, like I could probably do it now. But when I was, like, 22, like, we we used to drink Goldschlager all the time. Right. And I had just puked enough on it as a teen, you know, nineteen twenty, that I couldn't drink it. And same thing. One day in the bar, we're closed. I mean, basically his same story. Somebody passes out Goldschlager. I said, I should, I'm not going to drink it. And they're like, don't be a pee. Right. Same thing. Take it down. Comes right back. <laughs> and it does not take long. 
Yeah, and I don't know if that's a mental thing. Like, I feel like I'd be fine doing it now. If you I don't think it's just, mental. Not because... just the, the shot glass amount. Did you throw up everything else in your stomach? No, like he huh. said, just the shot. I mean, it's yeah. just the shot. Nothing. Anytime I've had a bungee shot, and I don't think it's mental though, because sometimes when it's happened to me, it's a shot I was looking forward to. You know, the one that oh. I wanted. No one handed it to me. You know, and it's and it's stuff I normally drink, but for whatever reason, man, it just hits wrong. And if you had a three ounce shot, which is the pour I prefer, then three ounces come right back out. Yeah, no food, nothing. Good. I like the way you said that. What? The poor I prefer. Prefer. Well, yeah, so. I mean, back in my day, we just called them doubles. I, look, <laughs> I, did, I never really, and I'm like, yeah, I never really understood that concept because I tend to frequent the same bars over and over. And uh, so I always get heavy pours. But in my mind, it's not a heavy pour. That's just what they pour every time I ask for a shot, right? And so it's always been that way. And then we're at the airport years ago. I got a shot of Jack, and, you know, they measure it out, but I still, I don't care, whatever. And he hands me this glass, and I'm looking at it. My wife's like, you realize, like, that's what a shot looks like. I'm like, no, it's not, man. They're, they're, they're like, shortchanging me. She's like, baby, that is what a shot is. What your friends who work at bars give you is basically a double or a triple. I'm like, I, honest to God, I had no idea. So yeah. when I ask for a shot at our watering hole, like, it's always the same. It's, always, it's deep. I've just never heard of it called a three-ounce pour. Like, it's just a double, dude. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I'm just... The worst is the bar that used to be open down the street. I went in there one night. You guys were not in there. And the guy comes by, and he goes, is Miles still here? I said, nah, he left. And he goes, all right, you, do you want his drink? I said, oh, what tequila. Is he goes, it's a shot. I said, yeah, I'll do a shot of tequila. Same thing. Delicious. Good brand tequila. Chilled. But it's like a, a goddamn rocks glass. I, <laughs> I was like... That is a shot. That's a shot, huh? <laughs> it's chill. The That's water what I mean. melted, you see. <laughs> <laughs> what ordinary, I like it watered down. What yeah, ordinary what bodily function went terribly wrong? 206 803 <laughs> wrong. Well, Mike, here's what on me is the one place near Thrilling High. Like, for some, whatever reason, I just end up in there during the week a lot more. So I, the one bartender, she just always knew me to have white. I was like, ah, white claw, whatever flavor. Sure. And then I think she asked you one day, like, Ted doesn't even drink beer. And you're like, what? Oh, oh yeah. I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm like, you're thinking of something different. She's like, no, he drinks White Claw. I'm like, ah, okay, here. Right. <laughs> Much different. Thing. Yeah, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> get those flowing. <laughs> Hello, Kevin. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. A lot of potty talk today. Yeah, well, that that goes bodily function. Going wrong. <laughs> So I got one about an in, innocent sneeze. All right. Um, ever been in that time and place where you're, you're trying to hold back a sneeze because you know it's not going to end well? <laughs> I mean, on occasion, uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> so I was uh, I was at work and I was chewing a baby carrot, and I'd gotten to the point where <laughs> you got it down into small bits, and I was going to swallow, but then the sneeze comes on, and I tried my best to hold it in, but this sneeze came. Full force, and all that carrot like projectile all over my computer monitors, all across the wall in front of me, all across my papers. It was a mess. I couldn't believe how much came out and the force. Like that sneeze, those things are going hot. Chewing on a baby carrot. Yeah. I don't think you need. I like the fact work. that you chew the entire thing before you decide to swallow. So it's all going to be nice and minced in your <laughs> mouth and perfectly grated. I'm happy before chewing. you take it. Yeah. Uh, Good times. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> right, just swallow as you go, man. What ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206 803 Try it with a hamburger. Line. Like, let's get, make sure people are chewing. No, try it with a hamburger. Chew it right? up, baby carrot. So take a bite of your hamburger, chew it up, get it mushy. But before you swallow it, take another bite of your hamburger and do that <laughs> through the entire process of eating a hamburger <laughs> and think about how much crap is in your <laughs> mouth. Sound and real. then, like, now Thank swallow. You. Hey, man, swallow you, as you go, man. Why are you in prison? Chew it on a baby carrot. <laughs> yeah, I know. You did what? I will say, I've been guilty of sometimes you're eating a sandwich or like a burger. It's so good. You, you're like, oh, you keep oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then you're like, mm, <laughs> 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 you can't move your jaw to chew it. <laughs> what ordinary bodily function went terribly wrong? 206 803 Rock. Hello, Brian. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hola. Hola, bitches. Uh, so when I was like 14, 15, my aunt lived in Detroit, and uh, for my birthday, she wanted me to come over there, and we we're going to drive to D.C., and me and my cousins were going to sightsee in D.C. and everything. The flight went great, uh, landed, everything's fine, but somewhere in the drive between Detroit and D.C., I, ca I caught a stomach bug, and uh, 
nothing was sitting with me at all. Anything I ate, immediately out the backside. I'm like, I'm just not eating all day so I can see the tourist sites and all that stuff. But I'm skipping pool time. I'm skipping breakfast time. I'm skipping all that because nothing's sticking around. And so uh, me being very cautious of the bathrooms, uh, one of the last couple of days I was there, we were walking around and behind this big, beautiful chain link fence, I'm telling you, there was easily a couple hundred porta potties over there. And they're just like singing to me and my gut starts getting that rumble. And I know that I shouldn't have ate those scrambled eggs that morning. You know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> so I'm, All of this I'm is going through that. your head. Shouldn't have had those eggs. And can I jump yeah, this chain link like, fence? And I see homeless people and I'm like, you know what, man, I'm whatever. You know, I'm not crapping my pants. 15, I was very prideful. And so uh, I found this big set of bushes and uh, wandered my way in there. And I found myself a nice concrete wall to put my back against. And, uh, you know, nobody listens to the show, so the country won't hate me or anything. And so, uh, you know, I start to relieve myself and, uh, you know, it was amazing. And I felt very, it was, I felt free American. And of course, you know, I had no on a wall made stuff. you feel freedom. I'm saying, you know, I was, it was taking a dump. It, it, it was nice. You know, it wasn't in my right. pants and that's America. <laughs> Not dumping in your pants is American, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, I had to go sockless on the walkout, but as I walk out, I see all these tourist people taking pictures, and I'm like, oh, no. I look, and it's uh, the Statue of Liberty, or it's like a little monument of her torch, and uh, people are taking pictures <laughs> of it in front of it, and I just sat there and stared at it for a minute like, what have I done? And then yeah. I just walked around for the rest of the day with my aunt and my cousins, head down, like, very ashamed, very ashamed, and sockless, you know? And so... Uh, and sockless. Yeah, D.C. was amazing, but that's my, unfortunately, <laughs> body experience. Okay. What have I done? Traitor to liberty. <laughs> I pooped on liberty's torch. Ted versus the FCC is coming up, and we've got your emails on the way next to the men's room at KISW.com. You don't just live in your home. You live in your neighborhood as well. So when you're shopping for a home, you want to know as much about the area around it as possible. Luckily, Homes.com has got you covered. Each listing features a comprehensive neighborhood guide from local experts. Everything you'd ever want to know about a neighborhood, including the number of homes for sale, transportation, local amenities, cultural attractions, unique qualities, and even things like median lot size and a noise score. Homes.com. We've done your homework. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows granger has got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. With an American Standard heat pump system, the future of heating and cooling your home is already here. Bringing constant comfort to your home, American Standard heat pumps are energy efficient, reliable, and ready for tomorrow, today. Plus, making the upgrade from your traditional furnace or AC unit is easier than ever before with home energy offers, rebates, and tax credits. Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. American Standard built to a higher standard. Better health isn't always about the big things. Sometimes it's a nudge from a friend or a head nod from a fellow jogger or even a smile from across the breakfast table when you've decided to pass on the bacon. It's the little things that lead to better health and Regents is here as a partner, opening doors to the care you need no matter the size because it all adds up to something big, a healthier you. Regents Blue Shield. Together we health. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids do a classroom? Homes.com knows these are all things you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. 
and he knows Granger's got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. It's warming up, folks, and about time to turn on your AC unit and cross your fingers. Or you can give up that moment of truth and switch to an American Standard heat pump system like I did. My place is on Comfort Autopilot thanks to American Standard. Energy efficient and reliable, my heat pump keeps things cool like the Arctic in the summer. And with energy incentives, I was able to save. Ready for the future of comfort? Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. It's time to dust off your glove, grab your bat, and hit the road for some baseball. But before you head to the game, make sure your ride is in top shape. At Axton Automotive, our skilled mechanics ensure your vehicle is running smoothly so you can focus on cheering for your team. Don't strike out this spring. Get your car ready for baseball season. Visit axtonautomotive.com or call 360-685-7976. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Coming up, we'll drink and toast in the weekend, then it's Bad Choice Friday time. You know it's Bad Choice Friday. Choice Friday. You know it's Bad Choice Friday. Hey, man, this is your fault. Come on. And today we celebrate a couple of birthdays on a Bad Choice Friday. He would have been 66 years old today. Give it up for Prince. You don't have to be rich to be my girl. You don't have to be cool. I don't want to poo-poo on the legacy of Prince, but as I'm listening to this, he reminds me a little sweet from the Diet Dr. Pepper ads. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> he just got a Dr. Pepper in his hand while he's doing it. <laughs> Kiss from Prince, taking on the one and only Tom Jones, who's 84 years old today. You don't have to be rich to be my girl. You don't have to Just listen to how he says kiss. It is creepy. Ain't no particular sign. I'm more compatible with. I just want your extra time and your... Kiss. Will it be Kiss from Tom Jones <laughs> or Kiss from Prince? One of those two tunes coming up right after we drink and toast with a shot of the day. I'm going to kiss you. Do we have time for a few emails now from the men's room at KISW.com? You've got mail. You've got mail. And a couple from our question, what ordinary bodily function went horribly, terribly wrong? Uh, guys, I've cracked two molars over the years by biting down on my tongue stud. My dentist wanted me to take it out. I told him my teeth are making his car payments. Still wearing that stud 20 years later. Rock on. That from Iris, the truck driver. But Joel, as I have a similar story to Thrill, chewing on his cheek after a dental operation. In elementary school, I got out early to get some dental work and uh, had to go back to class for a test. But my mouth was still numb. My dentist told me to uh, not eat anything. But our teacher Mine too. handed out gum. I thought to myself, well, yeah, don't eat gum. So that must be fine. <laughs> I started to chew on the hardest piece of gum ever. Well, that was my tongue. Oh. Once the numbness oh. went away later, it was the most excruciating pain ever. Don't eat or chew gum after dental work. That from John in Marysville. My dentist told me I didn't listen. I'm a grown-ass man. He's right. Listen to them. Trust them. On to the birthday request, guys. Can I get one for uh, my daughter, Alora, a.k.a. Tiny? She is three years old today. She'd like some Disney characters from Ted and Thrill. Uh, maybe a flush or a double flush. And a little kid fish sandwich. Thank you, good sirs. That's from our buddy, Eric. Fish sandwich. Well, gosh. You're turning three years old today. You know, three's a real big number. Not so many wives Mickey had before he met many. She doesn't know that. That's between us. Oh, no, that's out of line. <laughs> Just wrap me up, old mister. And also, I'm pretty sure if I have it right, three is the same number of fingers that Mickey has on his hand. That's, uh, well, that's your... <laughs> She's three, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to up there. Uh, you know what? You're probably too young to be at the park. It doesn't mean you can't have Mickey ice cream tonight. So make sure you tell your dad you're not eating any ice cream unless it's Mickey's face. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's on a stick, isn't it? It's like a, it's like a nice mick on a stick. stick. Yeah. Let me get one of them stick mitts. I don't know if they have them anymore, but I know in Disney World, they, Miles, you would love it. It was like Mickey's head, and it was handheld, but the ice cream was cookies and cream. Oh. It's like a, you know what? That's more of an ice cream sandwich. I don't know what yeah. I'm talking about. <laughs> Jesus. Guys, want to wish my son Jack a very happy 13th birthday. Welcome to your teens, kid. Give me your penis is too small as it runs in the family. I uh, love the show. Love my kids. That's from Dad the Rock Slinger. <laughs> Guys, please, I wish my best friend Nicholas a very happy 36th birthday. Can he get some Here Comes the Dope Pusher? Uh, two andro penises. And uh, maybe she wants the D. And hopefully some dad jokes for Miles and the dirty Germans telling him about how to fit the most food in his stomach at the buffet. Lots of love from the chiefiest chief of the chieftain crew. Here comes the dope pusher. Andro penis. She wants a D and she's going to get one. All right. Dad joke Friday. See what we got here. Ho, ho, ho. This fits in for today. Guys, I, a blind girl said that I have a huge one. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Turns out she was just pulling my leg. <laughs> oh, I mean, it kind of works just there. Uh -huh. A blind girl said I have a huge one. <laughs> yeah, right. It's already a weird brag. <laughs> Strange flex, yeah, bro. Yeah. Guys, the sad news. Uh, my grandpa died because we could not remember his blood type. I know. Oh, yeah. yeah he just... He just kept telling us, be positive. Just, <laughs> kind of tough without him, though. I just want to say that my favorite time of day is 6.30. 6.30? 6.30, hands down. It's an analog clock joke. I'm wearing a watch, Mike. I know. <laughs> Wasn't saying at you, Ted. Uh, you're staring at me. I'm just a general... <laughs> it's a general ha-ha. <laughs> Yeah, you want advice on how to fit the most food in your belly at the buffet. This is quite simple. Remove me from your mouth first. Yeah, I would say, first of all, pump out the other stuff that's in there since <laughs> the Germans. Oh, God. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> they got to say what kind of buffet. I can't give somebody recommendations on how to eat at a buffet. I would say the casino, more than likely. When you want a seafood buffet. buffet. Asian? Seafood? All it's American? All there. It's all there on the buffet. What's your top buffet? Anything uh, with crab legs. In this area? Okay. Uh, Snoqualmie Casino. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. We And they have every, pizza. Everything. Chinese food. You know, crab carb, legs. Carb meat. I did not see crab legs. I don't think so. Because I like that dude. Wait, man, my stapler. From office, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, they'll have crab legs. No yeah. shrimps. <laughs> my buddy Sal and I, years ago, because uh, he's down, like, down in the south end towards Olympia. All right. So him and his wife were like, we're going to go to the casino and go to this buffet. And it had dungies, like snow crab legs, whatever. She just blatantly brought a book. Oh, <laughs> We brought her yeah. old bay. She was like, I know what you two are going to do. Mm. Oh, hell yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, it's my friend's birthday today. Hello. He's turning 36. Good it would be great if the dirty Germans could wish him happy birthday on the air. That from Ruth, who has a friend who's 36. You guys want to guess his name? Yeah, she did not include his name, but it doesn't matter. Because <laughs> tonight we will call you the names that we want to call you. Yeah. And also, you know when it's time to get out, Kimp. <laughs> Please. But I was doing a shout out to my sister Joanna for her 38th birthday today. Can I please get a, a Joey Chestnut, a Suck It Up Cupcake, a G's Louise, and Coach Ted with some tips about turning close to 40s and that they're not going to be that bad. Thank you guys and rock on. Lots of love. That from Jimma. <laughs> Louise. I don't know. Coach might just shut you straight here. I'll be honest with you. It sucks. Pretty much everything goes downhill after 40. Drama, health, insurance goes up. You never know what's going to happen. No, I mean, look, same thing. What are you in your late 30s? It's kind of like when you turn 30. You might have to stretch a little more, be a little more conscious of some of the stuff you eat because the doctor's on your back all the time. But other than that, it's the same. Insurance goes back up. I, Mike, I'll be dead honest. That just kind of flew out of my mouth. Okay. Sure. Uh -huh. You know why my insurance is up? Because I hadn't driven in frickin' 20 years. So my car insurance is through the roof. Is it really? Yeah. They treat me like I'm a teenager. I'll be damned. <laughs>
<laughs> what are we doing to us these days? <laughs> right? I'm driving here. It'd be better if you're just standing on your front lawn yelling at the clouds when you say that. But I just was like, why is it so much? And they're like, well, you haven't driven in a long, you haven't owned a car in a long time. I was yeah. like, I would rent cars. Like, that doesn't count. Just Corporate take, America just, coming just, from just, the just take liability at that point, you know? Guys, I want to wish up my amazing husband, Brian, a very happy 50th birthday. He doesn't look a day over 35 and act a day over 16. He's the trifecta, handsome, handy, and humorous. Mm -hmm. And keeps my life from being anything but boring. So please, how about a bong rip, turtle sex, green beans, and some dad jokes, as he is the king of them. He drives all day, and I work from home, but we both listen to the show. Uh, thanks for the laughs, guys. And giving us something to talk about. Much love. That from the lovely Betty. <laughs> Green bean. What? Green bean. Okay. Green bean. Little, little, little. All right. Green uh, dad joke Friday. 50s a big one. I'm going to give you a bunch and the rest of the bad uh, dad jokes that I have for a dad joke Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, once upon a time, there was a king who was only 12 inches tall. Only 12 inches tall? <laughs> yes. Terrible leader, but a great ruler. <laughs> all right. All right. I see that. <laughs> Ted, you know my wife likes to talk during sex. Yeah, I heard she called you once. From a hotel room. <laughs> I heard Dangerfield do that on uh, the Tonight Show. That's a great line. Why don't the seven dwarves have sex? The what? seven dwarves. Why don't they have sex? Why don't the seven dwarves have sex? They don't measure up? Because they're minors. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Damn. I mean, they're the minors. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> What's the difference between an envelope and a window? The difference between an envelope and a window. You don't lick a window shut? No one looks at you funny when you lick an envelope. Here come Mark. What time? <laughs> What's the hardest part about being a vegan? The hardest part about being a vegan? Telling everyone? Being quiet about it. <laughs> what did Darth Vader tell Luke Skywalker at the dinner table? Uh, what did Darth tell Luke at the dinner table? I don't know. Use the fork, Luke. Emma <laughs> Mark. Guys, if you see a robbery... That was here, more Obi-Wan. It was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, song, yeah I, see, I just thought it sucked right. in Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you see a robbery in an Apple store, does that make you an... Accessory? Eyewitness? Eyewitness. All right, let's see here. Guys, here we go. Happy, happy, happy birthday! Happy, happy, happy birthday! Happy, happy, happy birthday! We have some updated locations for the Men's Room IPA from Black Raven Brewing. Thank you for continuing to send those into the Men's Room at KISW.com. Got an update on my Facebook. One of my public buddies, I uh, just found it in the wild. Uh, Retton Liquor in Fairwood. Mm. And weather's in the wild. Why wouldn't it be Fairwood Liquor? And Renton. Fairwood, I think, is a oh. section of Renton. No. Got it. <laughs> think of, like, Ballard. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. Oh, they're Fairwood just expanding, liquor. They're expanding out. I, I thought, no. I thought they're making a judgment call on someone. Guys, found your IPA Maple Valley Boots Tavern has it on tap. Boots yeah. Tavern. Boots Tavern. Wish I could drink huh. beer still, but others should enjoy it. Yeah, what else we got here? Well, let's see here. Men's Room IPA available at Northwest Beer Works. The Loose Wheel Bar and Grill. All right. Nice. I like that place. Fisherman's Restaurant. Ringer's Pub and Grill. The Lucky Silver Casino. Toscano's Italian Kitchen. Hey. hey. Yeah, get the frick out of here. Gas Lamp Tavern. You want one of them men's yeah. rooms? And by Bottle House and Tap Room. T-Mobile Park in two Yee. different locations. Oh, nice. Zeke's Pizza in Tacoma. Redmond's Bar and Grill. The Rainier Bar and Grill, yeah. the Marina Restaurante Pizzeria, West Seattle Golf Course has it, as well as the QFC in Kirkland, the Dreadnought Brewing Company, and Jose's Famous Salsa, believe it or not, also has the beer on tap. 
Also available at uh, Zach Smoke and Beverages. Uh, Chevron on Salmon, uh, the Salmon Service Center Chevron. Say that Terry's three times fast. Corner Store, the East Lake Market, Storm Lake Grocer, the Golden Food Mart, Beer Star in Seattle, the Safeway on Market, the Shell Station on Briscoe, DNL Food, Plaza Select Foods, Cedar River Chevron, Pacific Liquor. <laughs> She's real popular. Thrasher's Corner Chevron and Shell. Uh, Zach Smoke Shop on 164th. Discount Smoke. Total Wine in Tacoma. The Lacey Liquor and Beverage. Lucky Liquor and Wine in Sumner. <laughs> Lucky Liquor. <laughs> the Lacey one, huh? The Grocery Island the Crossroads, QFC Canyon Park. Payless Food Stores in Freeland. Safeway Silver Lake in Tacoma. The Liquor Store in Renton and Fairwood. There we go. Uh, Safeway Bockle, oh, nice. Super Smoke, Safeway Snoqualmie Fuel Center, Ballard Liquor and Convenience Store, and the 72nd Deli. Just a few of the locations that are currently carrying the Men's Room IPA. <laughs> and a couple extra emails here. <laughs> I know uh, it's a street name, but I like the idea. 72nd. Okay, all right, we got Our 72. first 71 failed. Yes. <laughs> we got it right this time. <laughs> We're 72nd Deli, all right? We're being honest with you. Oh, uh, this is a thank you email. And it says, oh. uh, guys, uh, Ted, thank you for the recommendation on uh, uh, checking out How to Rob a Bank on Netflix. Say so I have a good story and love the Seattle nostalgia. Cheers, gentlemen. That from the lovely Barbara. All right, Barbara. Thanks for checking it out. Thanks for the email. I was yeah. real fired up talking about it. I was like, Jesus, I talked about it the whole segment. Yeah. Uh, when did I feel old, guys? I definitely felt old when I was helping the team out for my son playing grid kids football. He's eight years old. One of his teammates asked me if I was my son's dad or my son's grandpa. <laughs> I turned fortly shortly after he was born, so I'm an older dad, but that makes me chuckle. Also makes me feel old. Cheers, guys. That's from Jim, your loyal Pasco podcaster in Seattle today. Enjoying the beautiful weather. Next time they ask you that, Jim says, not even my kid. I'm just here to watch. Knew I was old uh, <laughs> on June. He'll leave you alone after that, Jim. <laughs> the cops won't. Knew I was an old man June 3rd, 2004. The sticker on the 7-Eleven counter said, if you weren't born before June 3rd, 1983, you can't buy booze. I graduated high school June 3rd, 1983. <laughs> Somebody born on my graduation day. Good. Then buy booze. That from uh, Dave. That's a good one. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I think we need to go back in time. It's the last time that we played Ted versus the FCC. So if we could, let's go back in time. 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 Sid's Sheet. Filled shanty sits in the shady sheet folding town of Schlitz Creek. Sid slides steamy sheet loads on the Sid's Schlitz Creek sheet shipping ship to ship to sh Schlitz Creek fresh steamy sheet store. Three times fast. Sid sheet filled with shanty sits in the shady sheet folding town of Schlitz Creek. Sid slides the steamy sheet loads onto Sid's Schlitz Creek sheet shipping ship to ship to Schlitz Creek and free me a fresh steamy sheet store. One. Sid. Ah. Okay, we'll try one more time. And now, everyone's favorite daytime game show where one person could lose $325,000. And their job, or win, and walk away with nothing. It's time for Ted versus the FCC. Well, number two. Uh, this one on Ted versus the FCC. Again, this comes from our uh, listener, Stephen, in Excelsior Springs, Missouri. What does one do in Excelsior Springs, Missouri? Do? Dream of living somewhere else. Widow. Excelsior Springs sounds like a very uh, nice place, doesn't it? No. Excelsior Springs? You know, I'm going to look it up. I know nothing about it. No offense, this guy. It sounds like somewhere in the middle of nowhere that has a natural spring. Excelsior. I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah, I just have a bad reputation in Missouri. Uh, Sorry, Missouri. Well, uh, this is round number two. We're going to try it again. And this week's Ted versus the FCC. Same as last week. And it goes something like this. Sid's sheet-filled shanty sits in the shady sheet folding town of Schlitz Creek. Sid slides steamy sheet loads onto Sid's Schlitz Creek Sheet Shipping Ship to ship to the Schlitz Creek Fresh Steamy Sheets Store. Thank you, Miles. Way we do Ted versus the FCC is you need to read that one time through, then three times fast. <clears throat> Sid's sheet filled shanty sits in the shady sheet folding town of Schlitz Creek. 
Sid slides steamy sheet loads onto Sid's Schlitz Creek sheet, sipping chip to ship to Schlitz Creek fresh steamy sheet store. Three times fast. Sid's sheet filled shanty sits on the shanty sheet folding town of Schlitz Creek. Sid slides steamy sheet loads onto Sid Schlitz Creek Street, shipping to ship to ship to Schlitz Creek fresh steamy sheet store. One. Sid's sheet filled with shanty sits in the shady sheet folding town of Schlitz Creek. Sid slides steamy sheet loads onto Sid's Schlitz Creek sheet shipping ship to ship to Schlitz Creek fresh steamy sheet store. Two. Sid sheet filled sand- shanty sits in the shady sh- sheet Schlitz Creek sheet prepping ship to ship. Ship to sh- ship Schlitz Creek Fresh Stevie Sheet Store. Oh, oh wow. wow. Okay. Let's see that bad boy. There you go. Another win. It's Ted versus the FCC. You are listening to the men's room. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids do a classroom? Homes.com knows these are all things you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. With an American Standard heat pump system, the future of heating and cooling your home is already here. Bringing constant comfort to your home, American Standard heat pumps are energy efficient, reliable, and ready for tomorrow, today. Plus, making the upgrade from your traditional furnace or AC unit is easier than ever before with home energy offers, rebates, and tax credits. Learn more at americanstandardair.com slash electrification. American Standard. Built to a higher standard. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows Granger's got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Yeah, I got an Ecobee smart home and nosy Ned next door comes over to see. I told him about Ecobee. Turns out Ecobee's a lot smarter than his better known smart home. I told him, Ned, get yourself a smarter home. Visit Ecobee.com today. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. All right, coming up in minutes, we'll drink and toast in the weekend with a shot of the day. And we do have your headlines on the way at 550. But first, quick check out with Mike Hawk and some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. Thank you, Miles. A new list of the U.S.'s best nude beaches has just been released. What? What's their criteria? Hopefully, what I'm the not people look like. On it. Dude, people are naked. <laughs> Hopefully, warmth. And that's kind of, I think, where they went with it yeah. because the number one one is in Florida. There's a couple that are in Texas. There's a handful that are None in, in like, Maine, in Hawaii, <laughs> Maine nude beaches. <laughs> yes, a few in California. There's one that's in Oregon. Huh. All right. That made the list. So I'm sure it's cleanliness. I bet you that's the hairiest one. Oh, one in Oregon. Oh, uh, you're right. Gonna be some fuzzy people. A lot, of, <laughs> a lot of Sasquatches out there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Woman's got a beard. They thought it was a Bigfoot sighting. It's like, now nah, you're on. You're on the new yeah, beach. On the new beach, buddy. Yeah, but I, I got to imagine that it's you know a, a nice views. No pun intended. <laughs> uh, probably good weather, like you were saying. A clean beach. People that aren't creepy. Right. Probably well secluded. Like a, a good secluded entrance. No, I want a nude beach where it's like, yeah, we're right next to the highway, baby. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine that, dude? You know how many accidents there would be? <laughs> I mean, honestly, guy. There they are. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those dimples. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> uh, a farmer in Kentucky found gold in his soil when he was planting corn. Damn. How much All gold right. did he find? Uh, enough to make news. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. And the thing is, is that he and his his family has been planting corn here for a while. And all of a sudden, it's like, boop. Hey, look. There's also gold. Gold nugget. It's golden corn. Golden corn. 
So do you stop planting corn at this point, or do you keep doing it? I'm digging up my yard. I want to know if there's more gold. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're going to take the season off, and we're going to yeah. yeah one year, one year just way. metal detector, me and you. Exactly. <laughs> and there's still a decent amount of places in the country you can go and pan for gold. Pan for and gold. Stuff. Yeah. Sure. It's just a matter of getting enough of it. That's you're not going to get enough to change your life. But, you know, you get like 30 bucks worth or something. I would hope that there'd be one here around, around Washington. San yeah. Francisco being that close and it had such a big rush that they, you know, marketed the year after it. We did one years ago when we lived in Colorado. And I think my brother, he was excited, thought he found gold, but it was actually, it was pyrite, fool's gold. All right. But still, but they'll let you go out there. Some may have been the Colorado River. I honestly don't remember. But we were at a river and they gave you the a little panning thing. And yeah. cool experience. We thought for sure we were going to be rich because my brother and I were like, why don't more people just do this? Right. Mm-hmm. They're saying, go get gold. I'm like, oh my, I'm never going to have to work in my life. <laughs> yeah, it didn't uh, work out. Mike, maybe you should go out to the Cleellum River. The Cleellum River. Says it's the best place to uh, look for gold. Well, there you go. Okay. Uh, I'll be at the bar in Roslyn. There you go. I'll just saunter up there late in the day. How'd you do, Mike? Well, not enough. You're buying beer tonight. Yeah, you still got to pick up the tab. I sound like we've been there for a day, and I'm in Spurs. That's <laughs> what no, you don't even ride a horse. How did Ted already get the nickname Cookie? Yeah. <laughs> they call me Doc in these parts. We got to go, Mike. I killed a man last night. <laughs> Just to watch him die. <laughs> Since when do you smoke the little ones? <laughs> How did you get that poncho? <laughs> it's not even that hot. <laughs> Nice <laughs> 37. <laughs> you just turn into Clint Eastwood out there. Yeah, exactly. Out. 37% of people think they'd uh, make a better president than the two leading candidates. <laughs> I'm surprised well, it's that low. I mean, the bar is pretty freaking low right, right now, right? Just like, yeah. The hardest part I would think about becoming president is just the campaigning. Well, it's campaigning. Then once you're president, the thing is you're not a king. You know, you still have to run all this crap right. through Congress, and they like their agreement is we won't work together. So, like, if you're the, I mean, think about it. you're the boss, right? Right. And you have all these coworkers. We have what sales, and we have people that are on there, and we say, you know what? We will never play a commercial to sales sold, and sales said we will never sell anything on your show. You go, Why are you there? <laughs> what are you doing? If yeah. your whole campaign is I refuse to work with the other side, like, no, your job is actually to work. Right. With the other side. So we, if we you're president, you can't get anything done because they've already said, oh, we just won't work together. Right. You could also, they could all agree, hey, if you want politicians to be honest, just go reverse Citizens United. Let's not let companies be people. Let's not, not let money buy every freaking vote out of your congressman or senator. I bet people would vote different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You'd hope. You'd hope. Yeah. I mean, that's the problem. By the time you get there, you got so many hands in your pockets because you've had to raise so much money. Right. It's like you owe favors to everybody. To everybody, of course. Exactly. Changing the script here just a little bit. Uh, Steve, you and I like to go back in time from time to time and look at the entomology of certain things. Why Why are certain yeah. things called the way that they are? And then there's actually... What a Mike hand- is saying is that we're nerds. But yes, yes we do. There's also a handful of phrases that, I, that, that we also like to go back in time and see where it all came from. But did you know that a handful of the phrases that we use are actually from Scripture and you didn't even know it? Uh-oh. The Men's Room Top 10. The Men's Room Top 10. Ten phrases people say all the time that are actually taken from scripture. For example, Oh, God. This was actually shortened from Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Translation. Every time she calls out, oh God, during the old horizontal mambo, you're doing the Lord's work. Positive Friday. I don't believe that's what that means, BD. <laughs> sure does. <laughs> so these are phrases people say all the time that are actually taken from Scripture. This first one's going to blow your mind. Uh, cast the first stone. That sounds oh, yeah, about that one. Right. That one I didn't know. I, I feel like I know what that one is, Mike. What is that one, Ted? Like, if you're going to go stone somebody, like, you cast the first one. Correct. And it... <sighs> Punch first, ask questions later. <laughs> I don't remember if it was... Well, I think, isn't the idea that, like, a whole group of people are going to stone somebody? Correct. Correct. Somebody's got to be the first person. It was an adulteress. 
you know, she she had committed adultery or yeah. something like that, and then they brought her before Jesus. They're like, "Can we? May we stone her?" And he was like, "All right, whoever whoever hasn't sinned yet, you can pass, cast the first stone." Oh, I see. Correct. Yeah. Then, okay. What? How many sins before I can throw a stone? And right. And then eventually the the crowd just dispersed, and he went down to her. And was like, "Where are your accusers? Go on. <laughs> Let her off the hook. Good times. Salt of the earth." Mm-hmm. The phrase, the salt of the earth, originates from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, recorded in Matthew 5.13. He referred to his followers with this phrase to mean that they were valuable and essential. Salt of the earth. Hmm. All right. I mean, that makes sense. The world just happened. To me, it just... I like how he spoke better than our bosses, you know? Because there's like, you're valuable, you're, you're a team player, you're a family member. Well, you know, he was kind of known to be a good orator. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. People kind of listen. <laughs> well, and he, he, people naturally followed him as a yeah. leader. Mm-hmm. My office will close at three today. <laughs> Except for us. Except for us. We will still be The men's room will still be there. So I haven't right. checked my email. Did it close at three? No. No, no. Oh. Because every holiday. Yeah. We're going to enjoy closing the weekend. Right. Goodbye. Closing office at two. It's nice outside. We're going to close at three today. <laughs> Wish you would have told us we worked all day on a show. Yeah. Uh, fall from grace. Again, these are phrases that people say all the time that are actually taken from Scripture. The phrase fall from grace, shocking. I thought it's when I was having sex with a woman named Grace on the bunk bed. And fell. Rolled oh, over, oh, yeah, and oh. fell off. Derived from Galatians 5.4 in the New Testament, where Paul uses it to describe uh, those who seek justification through the law rather than through faith. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, to be a good Samaritan. Yep. Actual good Samaritans. Right. It was actually a location. Samaria. Yeah. Samaria. Right? Samar- Samaria. Is it Samaria? Samaria? I believe it's Samaria. I believe so. Anyway. Good folks there. Good they, folks. They, were, they were really good people. Good there people. was one bad Samaritan. <laughs> well, yeah. That's why you needed to be a good one. All right. Be a good Same Samaritan. Boy, they weren't perfect. <laughs> wow, Miles. Well, somebody out there wow. St- somebody's out there stealing chicken, I mean, look, chickens man, or something. All yeah. the civilizations that have existed <laughs> on this planet, they get dubbed the good ones. And here's Miles like, I don't buy it. There was one jackass out there. We don't Wait need, a minute. We don't you don't steal need. grapes. We don't need cops. Right. <laughs> Miles was that you, if reincarnation is true, you're the Samaritan yeah. that stole the All chicken. All right, John and Paul, then why do you have a lock on your door? <laughs> why do you carry thy stick, <laughs> thy club to beat someone if they come in your home? Most of them were good people, Miles. <laughs> Like, yeah, knocking on the it's door, like, giving you a casserole. It's like going around Minnesota. It's like, yeah, you good good people out <laughs> sure. there. Sure, there's some jackasses that ruin the party. Do you think yeah. they sounded like Minnesotans with me? Oh, oh yeah, you know, we we're just doing the good stuff down that here. That Jesus guy there, he's a pretty nice fella. Hey, I don't know, you know, maybe you cut your hair or something, but uh, you know, otherwise, man, I hear what you're saying. He you seemed like a nice fella. <laughs> you should cut your hair. <laughs> Hey, listen, you know, the wife's not around, and I'm a bit uh, of a drunk. Can you do the water to wine thing before she gets back? Because she's going to be real mad, you know. If I'm not mistaken, that was actually for a party. Yeah. That Why was, else would you do that? Jesus, try this for burger. Like a she put butter in the middle of it. Right, it was a wedding reception. Yeah, they it's ran like, hey, out. There ain't no booze, man. Help no, us they're out. sweating. <laughs> Gotcha. Probably like, look, we have not been to DJs yet, but I got this trick. <laughs> I mean, honestly, he We're about to go home! <laughs> 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 He kind of invented the Mediterranean diet. <laughs> he could multiply fish. Yes, he could. He could make wine. <laughs> My brother. So they eat the Mediterranean, just fish and wine. Olives, I don't know. Right. <laughs> I would have asked for different things. Like, listen, man, I have this concept called mozzarella sticks. Right. Can, Can you, you imagine if communion was feta cheese? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> First of all, if you gave anybody back then a mozzarella stick, they, they would blow on. their mind. <laughs> they would, this is the greatest thing right. I have oh, ever my. had. It was amazing. <laughs> they were eating unleavened bread. I know. He brought Baconators. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> he always showed up with a bag of fast food. Yeah! Come on. And he was worshipped by many. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know who this guy is, man, but well, Miles, they're all Jewish, so Bacon Eater probably wouldn't have gone over. I don't there was care. only two it's religions. But that's you why you had been Christian. Would you like to eat bacon? I will tell Then you if- might want to convert to Christianity because this burger is the bomb. That was part of the problem that the, that the Jewish culture had with him was that he was eating pork. Probably, you couldn't have picked broccoli. Not kosher, man. You picked pork. All the food you could have liked. Oh, man, I can't eat the well, space. Well, it goes I understand, but it's delicious it. before it dies. Phrases people say all the time that are actually taken from Scripture, the powers that be. Mm-hmm. Refers to the individuals or groups or, who hold authority and power in a particular context or society. It's derived from Romans 13, 1, where Paul advised Christians to be subject to the powers that be, meaning the governing authorities. All right. All right, yeah. I did not know that came from Scripture, but, right, you know the powers that be. Exactly. Do you know the powers, Mike? Do powers you know? that be what? 
So it, it wasn't it basically saying like, no, 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 obey the rules, but also like stick with the faith. Like do what you got to do to get by. Sure, sure, with, sure. With man's law. Like I'm probably screwing that up. That's, that's my bad. Uh, oh, yeah. You would have been the worst Messiah ever. I would have. Because you'd been like, you're I'm pretty this, sure. Uh, uh, nah, I'm pretty sure it's what God told me to tell you. Don't, hey, don't quote me on this. So this phrase, <laughs> I think what he's trying to say <laughs> is. Christ. Crap. Or he would say that like me. <laughs> what did he say? Damn it. Wait, I can't say it. Uh, the term scapegoat. Uh, that's the first goat you put out to slaughter. Ah, not exactly. So it's actually right. a uh, an ancient Jewish ritual described in Leviticus 16. A goat was sent into the wilderness bearing the sins of the people symbolically. Oh, you're putting on the goat? You don't want to be yeah. the scapegoat. Nobody likes being the no. scapegoat. Like, it sucks to be the scapegoat. Yes. But I mean, I like the idea of doing this to a physical goat. Yeah. Instead, of, go, instead of going and doing uh, confessions, mm -hmm. it just... Like, all right, goat. Put it on the goat. Out to the woods. <laughs> Goat's probably like, man, why I got to go in the woods? Because you're a dumbass. We also assume you that the goat You Jeff out there like, I heard the wolves eat them. I'm going to remember this, Ted. We also assume that the goat died. You know, the goat could just wander out the wilderness like, all right. That goat was gone. Freedom, baby. That goat was dead. Here no, you go. no man. He's just munching on four. Or somebody, somebody lived in the woods ate them. Like, I love it when they sin. Phrases people <laughs> say all the time that are actually taken from Scripture. They Mike, I like back. your nice version. Thank you. It's good for us, and the goat's happy. That's right. He's tired of being in that pen. He's living a paradise out there, yeah, dude. he's a goat. Right, he's just grazing. <laughs> Ain't nobody screwing with the goat. No. Now he's climbing the mountains. <laughs> Phrases people say all the time that are actually taken from Scripture. Wash your hands of the matter. The phrase comes uh, from Matthew 27, 24. I like this one. It was used when someone wants to completely uh, distance, distance themselves from a problem or situation, right? So Pilate, the governor, uh, uh, washed his hands to show that he didn't want to be involved in Jesus' death. Is it? Really? So that's what it's about. Right. Wasn't he? <sighs> but you're going to get... He was kind of the guy, wasn't he? Like, wash your hands all I'm you want, brother. my hands over here. Who asked for this Punch to happen? Pilate? Yeah. I'm going to wash my hands. I, I ain't been involved in this. Yeah. Like, wait a minute. I mean, he kind of tried to get out of it and gave some options. People were like, no, 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 no. Right. You don't get to just wash your hands, Jesus, buddy. dude. <laughs> You're up. Right. So I like, he's like, well, nothing I can do. Popular vote. Uh, the writing on the wall. Well, I mean, you had to write everything on a wall. <laughs> How'd you put this? <laughs> it actually comes from a story in the Bible's book of Daniel, where the writing appeared on a wall uh, during a big party predicting the fall of the king. I only know that because when I was a kid, my grandparents had these movies. I think it was cartoons like Stories from the Bible or something like that. And it was Daniel in the Lion's Den. And I remember the, the hand of God scrolled a message on there that did prophesied that, no, King's going down. And Daniel uh, uh, translated that. King didn't like that. So he put him in the Lion's Den. Really? Book King of didn't Daniel, like that. Old Testament? I, do, uh, I don't remember that one. So God basically sent the first text. Yeah. Because he would talk way, to yeah. most people. You know, Moses is like, no, nah, bro, we talked, and this is the thing. Mm -hmm. But with Daniel, it's kind of like, I'm just sending him to, I hate talking to this dude directly. Because he never shuts up. Yeah, I'm going to send a quick text. Here's an emoji. Hey. Uh, rise and shine is a phrase that people say all the time. Ah. It's actually taken from Scripture. The phrase is from the Bible in the book of Isaiah 60, 61. Isaiah was calling for people to get up and see the light that has come. Oh, so go. morning. Rise and shine. <laughs> yeah, right. See the light. Wow, the sun every morning. This is insane. Look it. You got to get up. Every time I wake up, bam. <laughs> the blind leading the blind at number two. It comes from Jesus in the Bible, Matthew 15, 14, when he said, uh, said it to describe religious leaders who were misguiding people. Which, no. What do you know? That happened back in the day. Yeah, from that, the jump. That was kind of Jesus' yeah. M.O. was coming back saying, you're getting this wrong, homie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if yeah. you're more clear. Uh, uh, yeah. I know that you'd like to talk real loud and stuff, but it's <laughs> that ain't it. Yeah, that's not what he said. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. And him and his, him and his boys, they, they didn't really run around talking about how much better they were either. That's right. Yeah. I gotta make a church to you. No, don't don't talk to this sick guy. You, you don't want to talk to him. Like, no, no, no. I want I want to no, talk do. to him. That's what I want to talk to. I'm I'm, I'm I'm here with this guy. You don't want to work out there. Yeah, I do. First of all, he owes me 20 bucks. <laughs> but, <laughs> so before he, he dies, I would like to collect. But also, I'm going to say some nice things. Uh, and then this is the number one phrase that people say all the time. That's actually taken from scripture. Go to hell. One of my favorites. Turn the other cheek. Ah, uh, uh, Right. Don't. Like, like don't, don't abuse other people. Don't right. Matthew five thirty nine used to express the act of ignoring insults and not seeking revenge. Jesus said it to encourage others not to fight back when attacked verbally or physically. Basically, it, it, it was it was to stand down in the face of adversity. You know, if, if somebody smacks you across the face, turn your other cheek and, and offer it to them. Basically, like, all right, I'll slap that one too. Right, all right, fine. And that's exactly what it is. Water off a duck's back. Like, don't, nah, don't engage. So offer your cheek for them to slap the other side. Correct. 
That is exactly what turned the other cheek means. Were they the original people that failed at helping kids that were bullied? Oh. Okay, listen, listen. I know, I know that other student. He's getting on your nerves. If he slaps you across the face, let him slap you on the other let side. Then you know what happened? Ah. He did both sides. A man in Florida answered the question of what happens when you cough and sneeze at the same time. What does happen when that happens? <laughs> I'll test your memory at 5.50. Thank you, sir. Our headlines are coming up at 5.50. In the meantime, have we made it to the weekend in drinking time? You don't just live in your home. You live in your neighborhood as well. So when you're shopping for a home, you want to know as much about the area around it as possible. Luckily, Homes.com has got you covered. Each listing features a comprehensive neighborhood guide from local experts. Everything you'd ever want to know about a neighborhood, including the number of homes for sale, transportation, local amenities, cultural attractions, unique qualities, and even things like median lot size and a noise score. Homes.com. We've done your homework. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows granger has got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. It's warming up, folks, and about time to turn on your AC unit and cross your fingers. Or you can give up that moment of truth and switch to an American Standard heat pump system like I did. My place is on Comfort Autopilot thanks to American Standard. Energy efficient and reliable, my heat pump keeps things cool like the Arctic in the summer. And with energy incentives, I was able to save. Ready for the future of comfort? Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. Better health isn't always about the big things. Sometimes it's a nudge from a friend, or a head nod from a fellow jogger, or even a smile from across the breakfast table when you've decided to pass on the bacon. It's the little things that lead to better health, and Regents is here as a partner, opening doors to the care you need, no matter the size, because it all adds up to something big, a healthier you. Regents Blue Shield, together we health. You don't just live in your home. You live in your neighborhood as well. So when you're shopping for a home, you want to know as much about the area around it as possible. Luckily, Homes.com has got you covered. Each listing features a comprehensive neighborhood guide from local experts. Everything you'd ever want to know about a neighborhood, including the number of homes for sale, transportation, local amenities, cultural attractions, unique qualities, and even things like median lot size and a noise score. Homes.com. We've done your homework. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows Granger's got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Big time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and see the throw hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed, and today we toast an anonymous man from somewhere in the UK, or as I like to say, somewhere in the UK. Uh, basically, this guy, he walked up to a camping and outdoor shop early one morning. 
and he did a number two outside right next to the front gate. Now, it's unclear why he did it, so we don't know if he was specifically targeting that shop or someone to work there or if it was just a crime of necessity. Either way, he was not worried about getting caught. And how do we know that? Ah. So the store is called Little Movers. They looked at security footage that apparently shows the guy defecating outside their gate. Right? They want to know who pooped here. It took 40 minutes to poop. It was a 40-minute poop session, but he did, in fact, get the job done. Uh, the shop, they're sharing footage in hopes that someone will recognize him or his poop. Uh, you don't need footage. You just got to ask if anybody out there knows anyone that takes 40 minutes to take a 40 crap. minutes. Because someone's like, I'm married to that guy. I know him. Do you think they watched the entire thing, or do you think they started fast-forwarding going like, there's no way he's still here? There's no way. That's a long time to pop a squat. 40 minutes to poop. My, my legs would start burning. He's going to have hemorrhoids. That's all I can I say. mean, even catchers have to stand up. Yeah, I know. I mean, is he just hiding? No, he was pooping. I'm just saying, they're watching the video like, this dude is pooping for 40 minutes. Gosh. Yeah. So we pour this booze, and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! So over the tongue and down the... Broke to party in our tummies. Down the hold on, bitch, hold on. You know it's bad. Choice Friday. It's bad choice Friday. You know it's bad. Choice Friday. Hey, man. And this is your fault. Yeah, Celebrate a couple of uh, birthdays today on a Bad Choice Friday. Prince would have been 66 years old today. He still is. He is the originator of the song known as Kiss. Now, that was a hit back in the day. Who decided to cover it? The legendary Tom Jones. Also sharing a birthday with Prince. Tom Jones is still alive. And as Ted said, he's playing a concert this weekend in Ireland. Ireland. He is 84 years old. And he covered Prince. So the question is, do people prefer the Tom Jones version of Kiss Mike yes. or the Prince version of Kiss? Well, the voting wasn't terribly close, Miles. And the, the voters showed that they really... They got bad taste, but they do like the original. So we're going to play Prince today on a bad choice Friday. Oh, come on. Yeah. Here you go. Here's your winner on a bad choice Friday. Hey. It is Prince. Welcome to the weekend. You're listening to Men's Room. 99.9 KISW Seattle. You don't just live in your home. You live in your neighborhood as well. So when you're shopping for a home, you want to know as much about the area around it as possible. Luckily, Homes.com has got you covered. Each listing features a comprehensive neighborhood guide from local experts. Everything you'd ever want to know about a neighborhood, including the number of homes for sale, transportation, local amenities, cultural attractions, unique qualities, and even things like median lot size and a noise score. Homes.com. We've done your homework. It's warming up, folks, and about time to turn on your AC unit and cross your fingers. Or you can give up that moment of truth and switch to an American Standard heat pump system like I did. My place is on Comfort Autopilot thanks to American Standard. Energy efficient and reliable, my heat pump keeps things cool like the Arctic in the summer. And with energy incentives, I was able to save. Ready for the future of comfort? Learn more at AmericanStandardAir.com slash electrification. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows Granger's got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Now for all TV news all the time, it's time for TV Time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, the men's room presents TV Time with Ted. Ah. All right, your choices today, you got the Jimmys, Fallon and Kimmel, Seth Meyers, Stephen Colbert or Ted Smith? Is it Ted or is it late night? It's worth it. I'm all these guys have talents. The team's writer is helping them up in their monologues each and every night. It is up to you to determine is this an actual late night joke and from whom or could it be a the Ted Smith original? A uh, five-year-old kid in New York got a bionic arm that looks a lot like Iron Man's and a one-year contract to play for the Mets. Because it's not like they can get any worse. <laughs> Seth Myers. <laughs> Ted Smith. That was me. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I made it New York enough that you think it was I Seth. thought of Seth Myers, yeah. 
Costco plans uh, to stop selling books except for the holidays. That's too bad. I've always liked going to Costco to buy a 20 gallon tub of Tom Clancy novels. <laughs> Uh, Fallon. Fallon. That's Fallon. Costco plans to stop selling books, except before the holidays. Mm, that's too bad. I always like going to Costco and buying a 20-gallon tub of John Grisham novels. <laughs> I do like going over to their book section, though. Because they have one. I, I do. I, I'll be honest with you. I, don't know that, I didn't know they had a book section. Oh, yeah. It's a big old flat line out there. They got all the, all the hottest books out there. Yeah, I mean, there's packages of beef jerky and stuff. Let's just look at the books. <laughs> Goldfish Crackers debuted a new flavor, Spicy Dill Pickle. Perfect for anyone saying, I love pickles, I just wish they were dustier. <laughs> Colbert. Seth? That is Colbert. Goldfish Crackers have debuted a new flavor, Spicy Dill Pickle. Perfect for anyone saying, I love pickles, I just wish they were dustier. It's Pat Sajak's last day of hosting the Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. Now that he is 77 years old, he's old enough for Jeopardy. <laughs> uh, Fallon? Kobe. Fallon. It was Pat Sajak's last day hosting Wheel of Fortune. Oh. Yeah, now that he's 77, he's officially old enough to switch to Jeopardy. <laughs> There's a little celebrity Jeopardy on lately, which is, you know, not easy, but not as hard. Not nearly as hard. It's like the Champions uh, Week. Yeah, Jeopardy to me is kind of like playing video games. I just go through phases with it, but I haven't watched Jeopardy in a while. Really? Yeah. I was crushing it earlier this week. Were you? Granted, I never do the, hey, I lost this many points, but yeah, I didn't. Mm -hmm. didn't well, that's the advantage of playing at home and just yelling at the TV. Right. They never take points from us. That, that's the whole thing. So it's like, right, every time I get one right, I remember, but I get it wrong. It's like, meh, oh well. Yeah. Uh, I would recommend uh, History Channel. I'm sure they'll have it on this weekend, too. I watched a very good series. Now, listen, it's not uplifting the end is uplifting but it was about the 80th anniversary that was yesterday of d-day yeah and i mean there's just so many things that could have gone right or wrong it it is wild but it, i it, they were about an hour a piece and it goes in chronicle uh chronological, chronological order about these guys training you know i didn't realize like the british troops i mean they basically had these guys sequestered for like two months you couldn't really? talk to anybody they didn't know where they were going because that's how secretive his plan was the sure. like the nazis know it's coming they just don't know when. And it just it's just wild, man. The amount of stuff. And I mean, when you look at the stuff that happened down there on Omaha Beach, you're just like, oh my God. I mean, ninety percent of the first wave doesn't survive. Ninety percent? Ninety percent. And they found out like a couple days beforehand what they were gonna do. Now to these these guys credit, they still went along. I mean, look, look some of them. Some of them just drowned because they couldn't swim. Yeah. They, they, they're sandbars. They couldn't get the landing craft. But it's just a powerful piece of history. Yeah. And if you're, you know, into that kind of stuff, okay. uh, pretty good watch there. Uh, I was going to say, it was also, I, well, also, I had to find something more exciting than that damn uh, NBA's final game. That game, <laughs> that game sucked. But, you know. Ass kicking. Right. Good time of year. You got NBA playoffs. You have NHL playoffs. You also have Major League Baseball. I think our Mariners. UFO playoffs, baby. Mm -hmm. They are, but I don't think Jen covers that, so I was trying to just get to the Mariners. Well, she should. Does have Jen Mueller on the phone? <laughs> Hello, Jen. Welcome to the men's room. Oh. I wanted to be on TV time with Ted. Oh, 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 there you go. What an honor. Now you are. What an honor. <laughs> it's yeah. all downhill from here, Jen. Do you put it up there with, like, your local Emmys? Yes. Yes, I do. Sure. Yep. How many Emmys also, do you have? I, I have a couple. Wait a but minute. I also have been the head judge at the Apple Blossom pageant in Wenatchee, Washington, okay. which is also commemorated on the same shelf. Okay. Do you I was yeah. gonna say, do you have <laughs> do you have these Emmys anywhere ironic or do they actually have a legitimate place? No, they have a legitimate place. Where what kind of ironic placement? Well, am I for example, there's that? there's an actress, uh she's famous, she has an Oscar on the back of her toilet. Who the and the not, reason uh, nope. And That's the reason she does is so when people can use the bathroom, they pick it up and they can make their speech in, in the, the mirror. mirror. Yeah. I mean, that's honestly why she puts it yeah. there. Yeah. No, I don't. I, I don't. Okay, no, Jen, no, let's no. do yourself a favor. Now put at I'm least one that, sure. Put at least one Emmy in the bathroom because you right. know something. every single friend you have that goes to your bathroom, you know they just made a speech. Right. Or mount it to the wall. That's where you hang your coat up. Something. I mean, there's got to be <laughs> right. more of a practice. Yeah, I mean, maybe I could do that. I mean, I have an inappropriate picture of me and my Super Bowl ring on my desk. And so maybe 
I can just leave that out, and people then can take their own inappropriate photos. I, 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 what, what, exactly, what, what are you doing it, with your Super Bowl where, ring? Where did you put the ring? I'm not going to tell you where I put the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Yeah. You have it up at your desk. I could walk by it if I worked what? with you. No, I don't have it on my desk. What I have on my desk is a picture of me flipping off the camera, wearing my ring on my oh. middle finger. Oh, oh, nice. Sorry. Oh, my okay. mother was appalled. She was like, you cannot do that. Jennifer, like, that is so inappropriate. And I'm like, Mom, do you know how many people told me I wasn't going to make it? That's for them. Yeah, sure. No. You, Johnny, you Johnny cashed, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah. How you been, man? Everything good? Everything's good. Everything's great. It's a sunny Friday. Happy hour started like two hours ago. So yeah. this is uh, nice. the, the, <laughs> the Mariners are doing well. Are, are you able? The Mariners are doing well. Yeah. Are you? I mean, you you watch them and you and you report on them and all that stuff. Is it easy for you to see this? Is it easy for you to see how good the team is now, just based on what you know? Well, I mean, the starting pitching was always going to be exciting and was always going to give you a chance. But I will say this is a really fun group of guys. I mean, they like each other. They enjoy hanging out. They've got great personality. It's, just, it, it's a good group. It's really fun. It makes a difference when you go to the ballpark. That's for sure. Do you think that a lot of their camaraderie, though, is a result of winning? Or have they always been tight yes. and they happen to be winning? Yes, but also some of it's just the personality and some of it's where they are in their lives, right? And they're they're experiencing kind of the same part of life together. Okay. Like if you if you take it back to the Seahawks and Legion of Boom and, you know, two thousand twelve and eleven and thirteen, like they were all experiencing life at the same time to get like the same stage of life, that makes a difference. But yes, winning Winning does bring you together. <laughs> That's winning. Fact. Yeah. Wow. Winning, helps. Winning, winning solves uh, all yeah. the problems at <laughs> a clubhouse. Yeah. 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 Talking to Jen Mueller yeah. from uh, from Root. Uh, Jen, uh, every day we come in here and uh, Ted tells us a different factoid about a sport that no one watches. <laughs> uh, and it's amazing that the uh, the knowledge that comes out of this mm -hmm. man's brain about things that I did not even know existed. The, the fact that the mm -hmm. cricket team won the other day. D is there anything out there? Well, I'm watching like Ice Steps or whatever that is. Yeah. Is, there, is there anything out there that you that you follow that would be kind of uh, not nerdy, but you know, like I can't believe that Jen watches this every Saturday or Sunday. She's watching the NASCAR Truck Series. Or right. is there anything other than the main I stuff? Do, I do like following NASCAR results. I do. I do like following NASCAR results. And when the Olympics come around, I love swimming and diving. Yeah, those okay. are your two go tos, huh? Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm always I track and field. That's crazy. Well, no. Yeah. Swimming and diving are a lot main, more mainstream. I just, I literally have the cricket channel, so I've been pumped for this T20 <laughs> World Cup. I don't know what, what are you doing with your life? That, like, I mean. What did you even say? Athletes, I'm sure, but, um, huh. Ted told us today that the woman at Xfinity thought there must have been something like wrong. Like she had never heard of the cricket channel. I want to add this to my package. Right. She was like, this is a mistake, right? And she was like, we have a lot of endorsers, like 230 across the country. No one has asked, ever asked for Willow, the cricket mm -hmm. channel. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious, get, how did you get into watching cricket? And how long do those matches actually last? So, Jeez, Jen, man. oh, I would like, I'm happy to tell you. Ted so, is so happy that someone has asked him these questions. Right. right I just don't tell him to I brag am, about. I am an interviewer by trade. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Cricket, when people think of cricket, those matches, test matches can last like three days. What I watch is T20. So it's only 20, right. So that's only about three and a half hours. It's like a baseball game. And I watch the thing on, yeah. right. I watch the thing on Netflix about the Mumbai Indians. And then I got into the Indian Premier League. But the only way to watch it is to get Willow. The cricket chat. I mean, that's and there it is. Ted, yeah. right? So you asked. suckered you right on in. Yeah. You played right into their hands. Ted. It's basically yep. Ted and South Lake Union. That is. It. <laughs> now, uh, uh, I think we get the joke. I'm pretty big on the east side. Yeah. I have. Uh, I've been watching. I cook. You measure. I, I noticed that none of us oh, have ever been much. on the show. Uh, that's uh, that's that's funny. Oh, isn't we it? could solve that problem. Yeah. Do you know how to cook? Do you know how to use you, a knife? You don't need to. Haven't you listened to your guest? You brought me on here to. to measure. Measure, <laughs> not to cook, Jen. <laughs> the cooking job is yours. The measuring of the chicken is me. Yes, you don't think we, we don't, you don't think we watch, but we do. <laughs> we can all cook. You're just going to be drunk by the end. Yes. What do you, why do you think I pour wine for every episode? Come on, guys. Can we? Please. Can we? You can't. You, you can't. Like I've, I've already got this. Okay, so we have our men's room IPA from Black Raven. If we brought that beer in, could you find something that you could make mm -hmm. where we could add the beer into the recipe? Yes, I 100% could. So you do cook with beer? I don't 
do a lot of it, but I do. Yeah. Okay. All I right. like things that are cooked in beer, but I have a hard time cooking with beer because I really like drinking you beer. You drink half can. You yeah, I mean, that's, that's honestly it. So how long have you yeah. been doing the cooking show now? How long has that been on? Uh, the cooking show has been on for like a year and a half. So I've got 20 episodes in, I think. We are continuing to go. It's been really fun. I will say that that is the most um, rewarding show I've ever done. It makes me laugh every time I see it at a bar. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Weird. That's my kitchen. Like, that's that's like really me, unscripted. Um, it's super fun, though, and I really love the story. Do have you made stuff. a meal where when you tasted it, you're like, oh, my God, this is horrible? No. I will say this, though. The episode with Taylor Saucedo, I overcooked the eggs. I blame him. We were talking too much. <laughs> Bryce Miller was not super thrilled with uh, cinnamon in his chili. And Ooh, uh, when that's... you watch that episode, he asked for hot sauce, which <clears throat> is his way of masking food he does not like. So, uh, so you were trying to make a Cincinnati-based chili, essentially. I, no, it was turkey. I was trying to do an elevated turkey chili. Elevated that turkey mistake. chili. That was a mistake with a Texas guy. The name is wrong. As yeah. soon as you say elevated turkey chili, like, don't do that. Right. It's the like putting... name of it is just turkey chili. I was trying to elevate it. <laughs> right. It's yeah. like putting okay. raisins in the, uh, you know, in the potato no, salad. Do, are you know one of those that not puts... Do that. Thank you. Disgusting. God, I hate no, when people do that. do that. Jen, who are you? Uh, are you going to gonna serve any of this at your birthday bash? Um, I'm not going to serve any of it, but we are going to have a birthday bash with food and beer and wine and uh, bingo. Which Food so and fun. wine and beer. It sounds like AARP. Is this like at your house? You know what? Hey, I don't need the age joke <laughs> on my birthday, dude. You know what? I did time that poorly. I apologize. Listen, I'm 55. <laughs> they are bugging me. I mean, my God, man. They send me so much stuff. What, I don't know why I wouldn't just pull the trigger, what, what, what but you're day, getting what, what day is your actual birthday? My actual birthday is June 28th, but we are going to have this party on June 27th in Pioneer Square, and uh, we're raising money for Food Lifeline. So oh. my goal is $25,000 for Food Lifeline because for every episode of The Cooking Show, I make donations to nonprofits working to end food insecurity. So I told you she was uh, nice. Are, are, are you cooking yeah. when you're down there? I will not be cooking. I'm just going to be enjoying and playing bingo. And Good. we're going to do regular bingo and mingo. Have you guys played this? I have not. I, 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 Mingo. Mingo. No. Name, that, name that tune, Bingo. Oh. oh yeah, right. I have. Oh, yeah. Are you any good at name that tune? I mean, if it's on a bingo card, I can get it. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Right. So right. where were, in general, where were, I'm not. Please don't put me on the spot right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't trust myself at the moment. If people want to go to the birthday bash and help support, where would they get tickets? So you can buy tickets. If you go to my Instagram page, Talk Sporty to Me, you can find it there. I'm going to post it on Twitter and tag you guys right now. Nice. Right, so you can find tickets for that. But, yeah, it's going to yeah. be a lot of fun. I, I follow you on Instagram. Uh, thanks for not following me back. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, so I have a question about uh, I Cook You Measure. Who has been the athlete who you were the most surprised that had some culinary skills or seemed to you know work better in the kitchen or know their way around more so than others? So I will tell you this. When Spencer Hawes cooked with me, he told me that he almost brought his own knife. Do you guys remember Spencer? He oh, was wow. the center from UW. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he is big time, like big time chef. And an episode that it will be released later this summer, Brad Evans, legend. founder's legend, um, informed me that he had been on a cooking show when I introduced him on my cooking show, and that really scared the crap out of me. So now <laughs> I ask people, have you ever been on a cooking show before? Yeah. Why did, I, I mean, Brad's so nice, though. He would never tell you did something so wrong. Right. <laughs> right. But, like, that's not, I don't, I didn't want to be surprised with that. Did he grate cheese with his abs? <laughs> oh no nope that was not part of it okay i'm just thinking about viewership i was just trying to help out your uh, your numbers I don't think so. my wife would dump me for brad evans tomorrow God. right there's no question about it i'd switch teams for brad evans. <laughs> jen one more time on your website and the date is the 27th and it's in pioneer square Okay. It's in Pioneer Square at the Axis event space, so we're going to have a good time. What time does it start? Awesome. Uh, happy hour starts at 5.30 there, and we're going to start playing bingo at about 7.15, 7.30. Awesome. That is awesome, and that, that's a great cause. So $25,000 is the goal. Yeah, and I've recently yeah. played bingo at a local bar. It, it is a lot of fun. Yeah. Why yeah, do I just you think I'm for... doing it, Ted? Like, thank you. <laughs> I've been telling people for years they should be doing a bingo mm -hmm. fundraiser. Nobody took me up on it, so I said, well, pfft. 
I guess I'm going to have to You know what, Jen? Else. You need to take another picture with that middle it's finger. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. This time with the bingo card. <laughs> we need you to play bingo. <laughs> yeah, right. I told you, Mom. I told you. <laughs> I tell you what. That'll be our photo and our memento from the evening. <laughs> yeah. When you guys show up, that's what we're going to do. All right, deal. Yeah. Jen Mueller, uh, please uh, come on the program anytime you want. And uh, we look forward to being on your uh, show, I Can Cook You Measure. Or I Cook You Measure. <laughs> I can cook so we're, we're, we're looking for the invite in the email at any moment. Okay. All, All right, right, Jen. Thank you so that. much. Have a great weekend. All right. Thanks, guys. You too. And thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You're yeah. listening to Men's Room. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. For those in the market for flavor, there's Modelo Spike Tawas Frescas. A flavorful drink that's a modern twist on a Mexican street classic. With four vibrant and refreshing flavors. Pineapple, watermelon, hibiscus, and cucumber lime. Made with a splash of real fruit juice. Modelo Spiked Aguas Frescas are perfect for any fiesta, small or big. Modelo Spiked Aguas Frescas, boldly authentic, vibrantly flavorful. Drink responsibly. Modelo Spiked Aguas Frescas flavored beers imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. Hibiscus contains juice only for color. Want to teach your kids financial literacy but not sure where to start? Greenlight can help. With Greenlight, parents can keep an eye on kids' spending and saving, while kids and teens use a card of their own to build money confidence. As a parent, you can send instant money transfers, set up chores, automate allowance, and more. It's a convenient way to run your household, customized to your family's needs, and the easy way to raise financially smart kids. Get started with Greenlight today and get your first month free at greenlight.com slash odyssey. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. A man gets pulled aside by TSA because his entire suitcase was filled with delicious spam. Meanwhile, a Florida restaurant tries to open for breakfast with an alligator outside waiting for ham. Florida man coughs and sneezes, which makes his intestines explode. We stay in Florida where the seeds of education and one family were sowed. And a woman sues after being handcuffed to a cruiser that was on the railroad tracks and then hit by a train. It is time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my car. All right, top seven. We got a Florida where a man had a freak situation. We covered this way earlier today. Going about his daily life, he was faced with the critical dilemma of needing to cough at the same time that a sneeze was coming on. Pardon. Not <laughs> able. A little Good bubble. Timing. A little bubble come up there. Mm-hmm. Not able to derail either one. They came together at the same time to make one thunderous evacuatory boom. But not everything came out of his mouth. You see, as uh, he soon felt a wet sensation and opened his shirt to find that his intestines were, were protruding out of his stomach. This is the same time that the Daily Mail felt it pertinent to mention that he had recently had abdominal surgery that doctors claimed had healed well. Apparently not well enough. Uh, he was rushed to the hospital and should recover rather quickly. Hmm. That's still terrifying. You think? Just imagine being that guy. You lift your shirt and it's like, those are my guts. Oh. You should never see your own guts Ugh. as a general rule, right. right? Can we not? And what? They, they said the medical term is uh, uh, the, 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 just the medical phenomena of disemboweling is what they call it. It's like, yeah, that's, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, we know we know what that is. Right. It <laughs> shouldn't happen because you cough and sneeze. Right. That's all. At the all. same time. <laughs> Damn. In other news, to the lovely world of the internet, where a man's carry-on bag had interesting con- uh, contents. The bag was flagged by TSA for additional screening, and the owner couldn't help but break into laughter because he had visited the lo- a local museum there in Minnesota, and his bag was filled with souvenirs. Several cans of Spam, which now I just learned is apparently they got a big old museum for Spam out there in Minnesota. Uh, yes, All I right. do. Or was there just Spam randomly in this museum? No, no, it's a spam museum. He went specifically because he is Hawaiian. Right. Oh, they so love they, spam. They oh, have yeah. all the different flavors. Like when they send us those care packages, and we use like, there's bacon spam, there's right. jalapeno exactly. spam. Exactly. The teriyaki one. Low sodium. The, yeah. You name it. I don't think there is anything low sodium yeah, spam. Yeah, exactly. I, they have one, but it uh, yeah. trust We me. call that meat. They had one that was light. <laughs> right. Yeah, light spam. Spam light. And he, he talked he talked the place up. He was like, they were great. The people there were so nice. He just gave me the bag full of all this spam and whatnot. And, and so, so what was he supposed to do? Buy it? 
No, no, no. They gave it to him. I'm sure he was very enthusiastic when he was there. And they're like, hey, oh. man, take a care package. But right. then he gets to the airport. They flag it. And all they find is spam. Right. I don't fully oh, know why I see. they you flag can't. it. Ha. Huh. That seems weird. Right? It does. But uh, after pulling out about 10 cans, the agent said that they needed to be scanned before sending them through. I wondered if they stopped. This is probably just my stupidity and my, you know, video game knowledge. It's like, well, I wonder if he thinks that they're little packages of explosive. Little secret yeah. packs. Also, oh, a right. lot of people, you can, you know, you can sure. seal up a can and hide drugs in it as well. Cool. Sure. They were probably like, man, uh, uh, look, we're, we're not disappointed in you. Uh... But this is very unexciting. We thought for sure we're going to find cocaine. It's just right. spam. He eventually was able to get through security, and a video shared to TikTok has gone viral, leading to recognition from spam themselves, and they sent him another care package about the flavors. <laughs> awesome. I wonder if we just... Like, Miles and I are unabashed spam fans. Sure. Not that we eat it a ton, but, like, I like it. Yeah. I would like one time to just make some dishes, fry it up, and, like, what if I didn't tell people... What would, they, spam, would you know? what would they think of this? So to try to hide it, in a way. Yeah, because I like, think sometimes, especially when you're eating, your your head can really get into it. Like, like sure. for, I couldn't eat eel forever because I was like, yeah, it's a water you think of what they look like, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if you made, like, uh, dumplings mm-hmm. and you could still have green onion and all the rest of that crap you spam, I, no one would know. And I bet you they'd be it, like, Ted, diced it. these are surprisingly good dumplings. So, yeah, the secret is spam. You, you could dice it for carbonara and tell people it's, you know, pork belly. Yeah. I also do like at the end of the video, like he got through security and then he showed a picture of a souvenir shop that had a spam display out there that's in, <laughs> inside the airport. Right. Like, Don't gun it. <laughs> Authorities in Florida were called to a local diner to remove an unwanted individual. Employees out of a place, sorry, employees of a place called Peaches arrived at work to find a gator waiting outside the front door. Authorities were called and the video was shared online of the officers wrangling and relocating the reptile. Oh, which crazy again, gator. Right. And I think it was early in the morning. Like, you start work, and you got to go get a dog. You got to fish a gator out of a doggone restaurant. <laughs> Where was it at? Florida. Oh. Like peaches. Yeah. I mean, if it's Florida, you're right. That's a bad day, but it's not that. You're probably used to it, mm-hmm. right? It's like having a raccoon around here. Also, if it's right. a restaurant, they should have just ate it. Right. Ooh, special tonight. Let's put it on there. This Fresh. is how we're going to get things started. Hey, hey, dude, we got, we got gator tonight. <laughs> we got that gator. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I went to Louisiana, but I did. Just in case those stories left a bad taste in your mouth. Thankfully, there's good news. Down to Florida, where a family has achieved a 1 in 11 billion accomplishment. Four sisters, Riley, Taylor, Alicia, and McKaylee, all attended the same high school and graduated with flying colors. But nobody could have predicted that all four of them would do so well as to each be named valedictorian of their respective years. Damn. Oh, that's impressive. All four of those girls well, made their competition was Florida. <laughs> right? That's when I started thinking. I was like, uh, how dumb is this school? No, that, that, that's an amazing accomplishment. Absolutely. Their parents say that they never had any, uh, never made any push for them to make such a high achievement, but merely encouraged them to give their best whatever that looked like. It'd be was. awesome if like, the interview with the parents was like, <laughs> they were man, rough, rough schools came on. Hopefully uh, those kids got some scholarship money. I just can't put in in her lap. That's what parents read. really care about. She Absolutely. told me something like, I'm a villa. Especially with four, dude. She's a villa yeah. denibian or something like that. I don't know. Denibian. But I know that her, uh, her cap and gown is a little different. <laughs> she ain't no valedictorian. She's American by yeah. God. I'm a Viagra Victorian. <laughs> <laughs> Man's Room IPA <laughs> continues to spread about the Pacific Northwest. Our buddy Dan found it at uh, 13th Avenue Pub up there in Linwood. Oh, Natalie, nice. Lan- uh, Natalie found it at Dino's Pub, and our friend Nikki found it over at Zog's. You can find a comprehensive list of locations on the Men's Room page of KISW. Go to Dino's. 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 One of a good pull tab at the 13th Avenue Pub in Linwood. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That's actually right next to my brother-in-law's place. Yeah, it's a good bar. <laughs> good food. It is a good bar. In the world of sports, Celtics take game one of the NBA Finals against the Mavericks. Game two will be coming this Sunday on ABC at 5 p.m. Game one of the Stanley Cup Finals for hockey is on Saturday on ABC and ESPN+. Plus, puck drops at 5 between the Oilers and the Panthers. Your Seattle Mariners have the first of three against the Royals tonight over on route uh, uh, underway as we speak with Bryce Miller uh, taking to the mound to start. Quick spoiler alert, the Mariners had a seven-run first inning. Damn. Leading nice. it 7 to nothing here in the uh, in the third inning. Gotta love it. 1 p.m. game tomorrow with Luis Castillo and wrapping it up on Sunday at 11 a.m. Got some early morning baseball. 
with George Kirby getting the start. You also have uh, your Sounders are in Missouri taking on Sporting KC tomorrow at 5.30. That game's going to be over on Apple TV. And then your Seattle Seawolves, a little nod there, are also on this weekend. They're hosting the Utah Warriors Sunday at 7 if you want to go check out that game down in Tequila. As All far right. as your weather, going to be a decent weekend. Temperatures are supposed to be in the mid-70s with some partial cloud cover all weekend long. Enjoy that sunshine, guys. That's it for your headlines with that. My God, is out. Enjoy the weekend. Grab yourself a broad, a beer, or some salsa. Help our friends at the Fisher House. We'll see you Monday. Yes, indeed. It's all true. But in the meantime, well, we be all about this bitch. So until next time, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. Room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man! A double flush production. You don't just live in your home, you live in your neighborhood as well. So when you're shopping for a home, you want to know as much about the area around it as possible. Luckily, Homes.com has got you covered. Each listing features a comprehensive neighborhood guide from local experts. Everything you'd ever want to know about a neighborhood, including the number of homes for sale, transportation, local amenities, cultural attractions, unique qualities, and even things like median lot size and a noise score. Homes.com. We've done your homework. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows Granger's got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue and guess what now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the name your price tool from progressive it works just the way it sounds you tell progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget get your quote today at progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust progressive progressive casualty insurance company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law